Well, okay, so you're good to go now? Well, I'll go get my proper kit on. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, of course. Well, this actually, is, also... This is my but, dungeon kit. Oh. But before before that, um, what about audio? Are you... What's your audio settings looking like? The the sound settings in-game? Because that's something uh, we should be Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Hang on. Yeah. So, I've so got I'm... it as... And I do this for the purposes of... And even then, my chat is still quite quiet. But I've got sound effects set to... Uh, 49. You tell me how yeah. you want it, but I've got sound effects set to 49, music volume to 17, and then voice chat volume to 100. Okay. I actually think... Let, let's try to strike a balance, because I... I've well, you been tell me what you want to use. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing 20, 20, 100, but I think that we should try 30, 20, 100. Because, um, yeah, the m music being loud is sound annoying. Effects. But sound yeah. effects, yeah, sound effects, I feel like I could have those higher, and that would be pretty good. So yeah, 30, 20, 100, 30 sound effects, 20 music, and 100 30, voice. 20, 100, cool. Yeah. Zip, cool. thing is, the reason why I had it at those settings previously is for, for streaming purposes, because yeah. I like the stream to include the chat and they can be heard. So, and then yep. yeah, the other thing, as I was saying as well, is 4.9 at minus 800 on... Uh, on the audio side of things like we were talking about the other day works fine on 4.9 is oh. I think there's no audio delay on 5.0 going to OBS so that would be, be amazing yeah I hope yeah I hope that's the case it, and I mean just... hopefully they fix a crap load of things as well with 5.1 but we'll see um... do you find whilst you're streaming as well or at least recording that your headset goes back into Quest 2 mode. No, like the the no enhancements mode. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, mine's... It uh, unchecks enhanced visuals? No, it doesn't uncheck it. It just does it. And I've been told that that's because of overheating issues. So... Huh. Interesting. But, yeah. but it, it literally just did it then. Thing is, it doesn't affect the video recording. It just affects yeah. what I see. Bollocks. Yes. Yes, Absolutely no, I, I, I have I have experienced that where, yeah, my recording looks so flawless, and yet I am, like, frame by frame, barely yep. scraping it out, <laughs> and, yep. uh, yeah, no, it, it's definitely something, and then I look like a madman in the recording, because I'm like, oh, man, look at all this lag, and there is not <laughs> on None, the recording, yeah. so, yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, it's kind of again, it's, it's part of what I'm hating as far as PC VR is concerned, is yep. that Same. I do... Uh, I'm like I'm trying to play that into the radius two, and it's bad right. enough already. And then, um, and then yeah, I've just got like the streaming issues and the various bits and pieces. Gotcha. Right. So, okay. What kind of pose do you want me in when we start? <laughs> um. Oh, that's that's a perfect pose right there. Uh. Wh whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Isn't yeah. it just? It's, it is. It truly is. Um, but yeah, no, I think, uh, we, we don't have to do any like formal YouTube intro type thing, but I do want to get you to kind of introduce yourself. Um, shall so... I use the words awesome and insane and mind blowing for and, VR, and Matt... just like everyone else? Yeah. yeah and you, you have <laughs> to make I sure to words include such as further ado. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And definitely include the words like subscribe, comment, and <laughs> click that notification no! bell as soon as possible. Only if you're uh, worthy. I told you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but uh, cool. Yeah, I mean, I honestly sometimes don't even do like formal intros. I'll kind of just like sometimes if I find it to be funny enough or like it just happens to work, I'll just take the recording from before we even like quote unquote officially start recording. So mm -hmm. yeah, if you're cool with it, some of the stuff that we were already talking about, I would just put into the video and then I we would still like do like a, hey, this is this is what we're doing and this is some stuff and then we'll kind of just go from there does that work or do you want yeah, to like no, that's fine. i mean i've got an idea for you if you like yeah give what it, i give need it go. you what to do what i need you to do is match the gestures as i talk ready match yeah match the gestures as i talk so just make it out like you're talking okay and then if i was going to do that i would do something i mean you can match this up later on but um, I would do something like, hey there, but pan here. 
and today we are in the dungeons with the silver tongue devil you know that guy who's constantly introducing himself with that fucking 30 ticks fit that guy sweet <laughs> something like that that <laughs> we could do something like that beautiful no i i do love that i do love that but maybe we should do that a little bit better i don't know but yeah yeah no wh whatever we happen to do uh not focus on the intro too much i think we should just like get talking about random stuff because that's yeah that no tends to be what people the, the only reason why i say but... about doing that is when me and indy play he always yeah. he always starts gesturing and i go hey there indy vr here just because that's how i do all my live streams and he <laughs> never does intros or outros and i think it's a good idea Myself personally, but cool. Okay, are we, both, well, I, are we both on ice bows. Of course we are. I Next well, I'm actually. In. I'm gonna. I'm gonna change my loadout. I think. Well, I, uh, maybe. Maybe I'll stick with this. I don't know. You got um, the hammers. You got the hammers. I do got the hammers. Yeah, I didn't even. Let, let me check out my loadout real quick. I actually. I didn't do anything. It's all that. about that dungeon trip, JJ. Fucking it sort it out. Like, oh, that's yeah. the other thing as well. How do you feel about swearing? Because obviously my language is. Uh, yeah, I am totally colorful. cool with it. Yeah, Excellent. no, that. There's Excellent. been plenty of Fuck swearing. You. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's PG rated when you're talking with uh, the old Quaker. <laughs> for, for the most part, yeah. I think uh, if, if we put a curse word or two in there, it probably wouldn't matter. But um... I, I swear like a sailor when I'm in my streams, and I've never <laughs> been, I've never been pulled up on it. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I tell it, you what, it won't this, matter. This is it was actually quite surprising to me when i saw it the other day this goes to show you how much i fixate on one thing and then don't do anything else i had no idea oh, how come mine don't do it I swear i saw you guys the other day don't do what quaker i'm sure axes he like chopped it into something and it stayed there oh yeah it's only chests for oh, some reason, it? yeah. Um, uh, they they should be... do that with everything. Come with on. With all boxes, at least. Or like, like you know, this, this, this thing right here. Ooh, wait, wait. This actually, one second. I gotta, I gotta put myself on do not disturb so I don't get notifications. <laughs> um, okay, let's do this. And do not disturb or until midnight. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I won't get notifications out. Oh, cool. whoa. Except... I just went into slow mo. Holy. Okay, wait. It's yeah, I. Okay, we're good. We're I good. was getting that last <laughs> night when I was playing, as well. Okay. And I, I think it's because I used seamless multitasking and it like. Oh, boom. got you. A friend of mine has a one of my mods actually. It's got a quest too. And after about ten minutes of play, he becomes Peter Pan, not Burnt Pan. No, no. He becomes <laughs> Peter Pan, and he can float through the dungeon every time <laughs> he jumps. It's in slow motion, and it's because oh. his quest is overheating. Oh, okay. That <laughs> it's is old. Great. It's old and riddled with crap. Yeah. Oh, so okay. I, so I would have you believe. <laughs> um, okay. So actually, before we go into stuff, I I do want to talk about our loadouts real quick and just like have a bit of a conversation about that. But before, could I get you to stand here so I can have a beautiful backdrop of this soul guy with yeah, you, yeah, sure. just like introducing you. Okay. Yeah, cool. No worries. From, actually, no, no, come, come over here, come here. So it's like. Well, no, this would bit. make. The, no, I, no, you, I, you think, I, think you think this, this would be, be better? I think this would be great. Yeah. Okay. Because okay, then I can go something you. like, "Hey there, Silver Tongue Devil here," and in this stream, oh, no. ah! <laughs> or something along those lines. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, sure. I'll okay. stand here if you want. You tell me where I, was, I just wanted to fall off whilst I was introducing. You tell me where you want to want me to stand. No, Do you that's want that guy that's... behind me. That is beautiful right now. No, I love it. I love it. Um, all right. Well, yeah. I'll I'll go ahead and start some random thing, and we can chime in and go from there. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, welcome to this video. I am here with Silver Tongue Devil. You might know him from his tips and trick videos uh, with a ton of different games, but Dungeons of Eternity, and specifically, uh, or Dungeons of Eternity specifically, you might know because you might be watching just for the Dungeons of Eternity, and he has amazing videos for his tips and tricks but yeah take it away silver tongue devil give us a little introduction I, that was good bud he's not wrong jj is not wrong thank you the artist formerly known as burn pan is it just me <laughs> or 
Was Burnt Pan better than JJ, or is JJ better than Burnt Pan? I guess we'll never know, because I assume you're sticking with that now, so... Uh, but yeah, probably. No, I think, you've, I think you've covered everything. You'll probably... Hi there, I'm Silver Tongue Devil. You probably recognise my voice from such things as Tips in 30 Ticks for various yes. games. Dungeons of Eternity being one of the latest. Do you fucking mind? I'm trying to... I'm trying to tell JJ about stuff. Fucking hell. This is a really bad place to do it. Shut up! <laughs> oh, oh, he was talking. Right, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm he pretty... started talking for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he started he talking talk. at just the right time. That's but, yeah. funny. Oh, man. Cool. Yeah. Good stuff. So, All right. what do you want to do? Yeah, let's uh let's first look at our loadouts real quick. Um, yeah, yeah. I know we we already kind of looked at our loadouts and and we'll probably yeah, yeah. Uh, just like put that in the recording. But I want to talk about especially our exo perks because that's a conversation that I don't have extremely often. Yeah, um, yeah, is like yeah, what what are the optimal perks to do, especially if this game eventually comes out with like a dungeon or, or like a challenge mode where yeah. it really does matter what you choose. Yes. And you have different challenges that will have different uh, difficulties and different uh, ups and downs. So, well, yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, crack on. Oh, well, no, if, if you want to uh, take it. Well, yeah, because, yeah, I suppose I'll pretend like I can see what you're talking about <laughs> and make points. Yeah, no, no that's I, good. That's good. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, yeah, but you, you could go in your own room and just like look at the points and we can. Maybe. Just, uh, I might see. need to be reminded. I might need to okay. be reminded. I haven't okay. even leveled them all up yet because as far as oh, I'm concerned, no. I have what I think are the, good the, ones. the meta perks. Well, yeah. it's at this point, it is what I would class as meta perks, as in those perks, if you are not using them, you are doing yourself a disservice. Now, I know that those perks may change for things like at Dungeons Competition, I remember what they called it now, the Dungeon Defense Competition that yes. just went on yep. recently that you were yep, covering. Yep. Now, I know mm -hmm. those perks might change for that, but for the purposes of normal play, where everybody's working together and you don't have a mole in your team, <laughs> then, you know, being faster is always good because you'll move around faster, dodge faster, you know, and get finished faster. Yeah. Having health regen basically means that potions are completely fucking irrelevant. And yeah. as much as I hate that... I still don't know if I want it to go or not. I think yep. the health regen perk is too hard. But then if they nerf it, I'll miss it. But I do right. miss having to drink potions or at least smash them on the floor because you don't need to do it with health potions anymore. And if you, as exactly. your team's taking damage, it's just one less thing to manage. Um, yeah. On head, strangely... I need to think what other ones are on there. The on mind head, perk. I can't even yeah. think what they're on there. As far as the mind perk is concerned, I usually just put the gold one on because you then get more gold, Same. which then yeah. means that you get more experience. But as I understand it, it's such a minute amount of gold. Oh, yeah. well, sorry. It's such a minute amount of experience for gold yep. that yep. it isn't really I... worth bothering with. And then right. the only other one is your, your arms one and because i use the bow and to be honest if you're playing this at i suppose any level that bow. Yeah. is always gonna beat that you know yeah and i know some people do throw uh, uh, well a lot of people do throw uh weapons but um you know I'm, I'm in my 40s now, and I want to avoid that tennis <laughs> elbow. And uh, I'm fairly well practiced at virtual archery, as it happens. So I'm I'm very comfortable with doing this, doing that motion. Some people yeah. aren't. I know some people can't hold their arm up like an entire dungeon length. But yeah. thanks to for those watching, maybe familiar with In Death Unchained, thanks to IDU yes. and Siege of Heaven mode, I'm used to holding my arm up for very, very, very long nice. lengths of time to get the shooting. So I, Sweet. if you met me in real life, you would see that I have a puny right shoulder, but my left shoulder is fucking huge. <laughs> so it's just one yeah. big, I'm just one big shoulder. That's so, awesome. But then if you're melee, there are me more melee focused. So I suppose there isn't a meta for, there's, the meta surrounds everything else. But then as far as um, the arms perk is concerned, that depends on what you're armed with. And then I would have said that there kind of is a meta because ranged is always going to trump melee because, yeah. well, you're 
killing them and they can't kill you. So. Yeah. I think yeah. the one thing that could change in the future, I, I have no like actual proof that this might happen, but mm. I think if that meta were to change, it would probably happen because limited arrows, like, like you will maybe get limited arrows and so you will have to spend them wisely and yeah. then have more value because yep. yeah, you spam arrows all the time and, and you can't- I, that, that I like that as long as you can pick them back up again. Yeah, yeah, and then find that's more another thing. Kind of oh, like, um... oh, and oh, that now see, I was going a different tangent. Okay. Because okay. as an archer, it would be very important for me to pick up all of my arrows and yours, and then I don't have to yeah. share, do I? And then I can do all the archery, and you can fucking <laughs> go and do the melee. You can go so... and put yourself in danger because yeah. I've got all the arrows. I, I said this to the devs. I was like, when they told me, oh yeah, gold is shared when you pick it up. I was like, oh man, I've been chasing around trying to get all the gold just because of that <laughs> thing at the end that says you collected the most gold. I like yeah. having that little award. I'm a greedy <laughs> guy when it comes to the dungeons, but it makes no difference. You collect the gold as a team anyway. So yeah, but yeah. Um, I like the idea of limited arrows. I know there's going to be people who don't. Yeah, I, so I recently maybe the ability to pick up. Right. I I made a suggestion post. I mean. Not that suggestion posts are going into the game, but I, I thought that it might be a good idea to have some sort of a hardcore or realism mode mm. that, like, you would go yes. into that, and that one would be more balanced towards, like, multiple metas working, whereas yep. the whole game is just how it works and and yeah or well, it... that well that yeah that would be the thing in that circumstance then that would break the meta and you wouldn't have yeah. a meta you would have well you probably have a best loadout and then counters still, to yeah. that or things with it be, yeah. but well yeah. hey look as far as i'm concerned jj you have my signature on this providing we also put team down yeah oh oh my I gosh think that is that huge i didn't even know i didn't remember that <laughs> uh, you know you didn't and it, it's the thing that i've been pushing for i actually asked um mr scary who's like the uh like if quake is the voice then then scary's the brains i guess i mean you know they've both got brains and voices but yeah. he's the more technical guy of the two yep. is, as i understand it and i obviously spend quite a lot of time speaking to mr scary and i said to him like oh but the bombs this was a few versions back the bombs we can damage each other with them are you, you gonna push that a little bit further could you could you could you and they were like <laughs> yeah no that's not the direction we want to go and i was like oh yeah. man <laughs> i would love it's one of the things that i suggested to him back in the uh, back in the day as well and this was again a few updates ago i would love for this to become the dark and darker of vr you know yeah. Tarkov is a very popular game, and we've got Tarkov in VR in Ghost, Ghost of Tabor, and that's yep. doing very well. Mm -hmm. And Dark and Darker uh, was a very popular game, and I think it's coming back to form now. I don't really play anymore myself, but they've added some modes. And I know just by putting friendly fire in on this, well, all of a sudden, because you guys that were doing the it was it called dungeon defense yeah it was you're, you're right there yeah. so you guys that were doing dungeon defense great idea but at the end of the day it, it's almost like and, and i know there's a rule set and a system and everything but it almost feels like you're clutching at straws to make a cooperative game competitive oh definitely you put friendly fire in and all of a sudden we can go into a random dungeon that neither of us have ever seen and then match one you run to the end of the dungeon and we turn off tags and do all that stuff to so you fighting monsters and looting chests and you come across each other naturally and if friendly fire was on we could do that now and the devs would have to yeah. do nothing and with friendly fire on you know that can happen yeah and there's no I'd reason like to not see... to enable it in or, or give us the option to enable it in private yes. lobbies yeah why not i mean yeah. if, if you're gonna do a realistic lobby then i think that feature just needs that to too. be checked and yeah. then those who want the casual experience or don't like that have got somewhere to go but yeah. then the other thing as well is you never want to split the player base so sure. as as you've probably suggested and as i've suggested as well have a toggle if you want to be able to take friendly fire toggle on if you do not want to be able to fire take friendly fire you toggle off right those who want to can those who don't want to can't that also yep. then would prevent trolling if somebody comes into the lobby and they're just being a 
sleaze, then you can just turn it off and they can't damage you anymore. And if yeah. they've left theirs on, you can take them out. Right. But yeah. As far as I'm concerned, fuck toggles, friendly fire all the way. Let's go. I agree. <laughs> I agree. No, I, I actually think that's a good idea. Um, But yeah, so uh, we've got yeah, all these perks. We kind of went on a little bit about uh, from there about <laughs> the the meta perks and everything. Um, I actually recently what, me on a tangent. No, no, <laughs> Papa, no. But yeah, no. I I recently have, like you were saying, I for a while have just thought there's this one loadout that's just the best loadout, and then yeah. uh, after playing with a couple other guys that have been playing for a really long time and might even have more hours in the game than I do. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but um, they don't even use like the, I guess for me, traditional haste and vitality and um, the the impale perk mm -hmm. and like fortune. That's those four right there, impale, haste, vitality, and fortune. Those are the four that I used for like 90, maybe 99% yeah. of all of I would have said buttons. if they're not using them, then what are they using? Exactly. And are they yeah. doing it to just change the experience? Because so, anything else maybe isn't both. really optimal, is it? Well, no. See, so the thing is, I would say that the explosion... So vitality is on the chest. And so the chest perk explosion... Uh, what, what is it? It's blast. It's called blast and it reduces explosion damage taken by 80%. Mm -hmm. And so yep. those people would be using explode. There'd be like one person in the the group that uses explosion just to make sure that like at Somebody least one person can survive when, yeah. when there's two no, barrels on an entrance so or something like that. That's fair. But yep. as somebody who like, as far as in death unchained is concerned, where I have taken a meta and analyzed it and tried to hone it down to as simple a terms as possible i think yeah. the biggest term that i can give is if you are going to pick things that you can only pick before you go into the dungeon and you can't change and you can't adapt on the fly on them then you want to be giving yourselves things that you can't get now there is no way for us to be able to always be regenerating our health on the fly yeah. however there is a way for us to stop being hit by explosions kill the guys who have yeah. the stuff that cause However, the explosions yeah you can have both explosion and a like i guess alternative remind to vitality me, rem remind me what would yeah. oh no yeah you're talking about the Stillness. standing still and yep. hp well see yeah. that's the, see, so there's the thing yes Instead you could but then you're using two perks to in essence do what you can do with one using two slots in what you can in essence do with one and on top of that as well i don't know about you but if you're standing still to regenerate your health you're asking for bombs as far as i'm concerned well so the that would be ends, yeah yeah that that would be my counter to it because it because then like the other thing as well is if you're using I, I you've probably explored the perks a lot more than i have i've looked at the perks and gone that's optimal that's optimal that's <laughs> optimal that's optimal and i've yeah. barely touched anything else so i right. haven't experimented but i'd like to think that i've got enough time in game and these sort of games where i can look at them and go well yeah that's very like the explosion one is situational it only yeah. comes into its own when there's However, explosions going off i would argue that even vitality is situational if you can play this game like quote unquote without getting perfectly, hit. Yeah, yeah exactly you you would prefer to have something where like randomly i would say to me explosion barrels and any explosion damage is more mm. dangerous than literally anything else in the game maybe frozen mm. like freezing errors and stuff like that those are more dangerous but you there's yeah. no resistance there's no exo perk for that um mm. and so yeah, no, I, th I think both the explosion resistance and the melee resistance. Because if you get frozen and then you get swarmed, if you have melee resistance, you have yeah. much better chance of not dying because melee damage is the one that does the most damage. So, so I suppose then I it know. depends. We'd have to define the meta of are you yeah. playing on level 7, <laughs> like the top hardness, True. or are you playing lower than that? And I would imagine 99% yeah. of players play lower than that. And the yes. thing is... Part of the reason why I'm saying what I'm doing would be considered the meta as far as exosuits is, do you gain any more XP for going on a higher level? 
No. no. Yeah. Why are you going on a higher level then? Oh, for the challenge. Well, then yep. the Met is kind of out of the window because you're self-inflicting, making the game harder on yourself. Yes. For somebody like me who's like, I'm running this shit optimally, then... <laughs> I mean, you know, I know it's boring, but technically you put it on level one. You wouldn't put it on level seven because, you know, it's going to make things harder. So mm -hmm. the meta will change, but then that isn't the meta because it's not for the vast majority of people and doesn't work in the vast majority of cases. Although I, am, I know what you're saying. If you had the perfect game, you don't need those things. Yeah. That is true about Vitality. However, I don't think in, in a perfect game... You wouldn't technically need anything that's on the chest piece. In True. that circumstance, you could be... If we're talking about the perfect game and analysing the net from there, you wouldn't need the chest piece, so you wouldn't need Vitality or any of the perks because we're not going to get damaged. Yeah. So then that's part of the reason why I would put haste on because that makes you faster naturally. All of you... Being able to jump higher isn't going to help you. And <laughs> yeah. being able to not take fall damage... Well, we're having the perfect game, so we're not throwing ourselves off of ledges. So we right. don't need that one. And then... I can't even remember the other ones because I don't even look at them. Yeah, so actually, in that circumstance... Are you, are you using haste? Is that what you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always yeah. what you have? Okay. But then, yeah, So here's the thing as well. Yeah. I know a lot of people are getting a bit or some not a lot some people have reported as far as discord is concerned that you know having haste to maximum level is causing them a bit of nausea and so they want to be able to be as fast as they can handle but yeah. not go all the way and right. so i do think it would be a good idea if you could at least control some of these perks that affect you but it, again this kind of gets back to what i'm talking about i'll always try and go for perks that give me an effect that i can't get any other way you yeah. can't get regeneration any other way you can heal yourself but mm -hmm. regeneration kind of trumps that especially on the lower levels and then you don't even need to worry about carrying healing items anymore yeah. and neither does any of your party maybe right. if inventory space became a thing and it wasn't just maximum three of everything then you know it might be even stronger met because then you can completely get rid of having to carry any healing potions and mm -hmm. you know stack up more on everything else i'm trying yeah. to think what other perks the head perk as well i don't think there's anything that's particularly useful on the head perk Mine, you've got the yeah. advantage on me that i haven't really looked at the the rest right. of them yeah, I mean, it's it's fortune, stillness, like, you can get gold, you can get uh, health while standing still, you can do yeah, the stillness, isn't in it? Yeah. decreased enemy accuracy or the disable enemy jumping attack. Uh, but we're, so, yeah, so yeah. the jumping attack thing is good, but we're having the perfect game, so we're not going to be in range of anything jumping at us. Yep. The, yep. Again, I'm being pedantic by we're having the perfect <laughs> game, because who the fuck has a perfect game? Um, yeah. But... As far as the jumping, uh, enemy. I, okay, I associate yeah. that more with people that have the arachnophobia fears. side mm -hmm. of things and the fears. Yep. And I, I assume that it, it affects skeletons jumping at you and whatnot as well. Yeah. So in that regard, that means that they're going to be able to cover less ground to get you. They're always going to be running at you. But again, yep. perfect game. We're not going to be in range of them. We're going to be slotting them from range with our bows and crossbows and magic or whatnot. Yeah. So I also find it really fun. Needed. Yeah, I find it fun to just have the skeleton jump at me, even though it's not optimal, as we say. Everybody um, loves it's... chopping them out the air or as they're jumping <laughs> yeah. at you, fucking landing exactly. that headshot. It's class. Exactly. Um, but, but, uh... And then, so, of the head ones, because we can already get regen unconditionally, as in we don't have to stand still, it's not too bad a condition because if you have the perfect game, you'll you'll be able to stand your ground and nothing will get close to you anyway. But yep. for me, I'd have I would rather have con non conditional regen than conditional regen. And if I have conditional regen, that then uh, sorry if I have non conditional regen, it then frees up the head slot. And the head slot is unique in that. It is doing things that you can't normally do in the game. You can't normally stop enemies leaping at you. However, you are having the perfect game, so you don't need to worry about that. But yeah. <laughs> there is no way for us to increase the amount of gold that we get. 
Um, yep. Not that gold is an important thing, because I don't yeah. know about you, I've got absolutely stacks of it, and fuck yeah. all to do with it. You probably Third, got a lot more than I have. 300,000, no, 380,000, yeah. <laughs> right. So, but yeah. then having said that, that was the first thing that I said to Scary when he told me a while back about being able to have something in here. I mean, we'll probably talk about this later, but... Yeah have something in here where we can store our stuff from the dungeon and my first response was what what am i going to spend my gold on then if i can everything that i bring back from the dungeon i can just put in a chest i'll i'll never yeah. need to spend my gold on anything because i'll have all the weapons fabricated that i want yep. and you right. know so and his response was very cryptic and he basically said something along the lines of uh yeah we're gonna be tweaking that you'll have some things so <laughs> and, and i hope so because Building up a currency to be able to get the nice things is a good thing. So, yeah. I don't know, maybe we'll I see think... some even higher tier stuff or, or some yeah. cosmetics. I think eventually, yeah, cosmetics or, or just mm. like other things that you can do with gold will be mm. really cool. Because at the moment, yeah, if especially if we get that storage space, then yeah, there's just almost no reason to ever yeah. use your own oh, gold. Scoreboards. There's, yeah, there's a re well. This is the other thing as well. Is then uh, as far as gold earning as well, there is a gold earned scoreboard, isn't there? I'm yep. sure there is. Yeah, there is. It's so time of course, then if you're playing the meta and you're trying to get up in the leaderboards, yeah, again, That's something else I don't agree with, but we can talk about that later as well. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. agree. It's just I don't know. I come. I'm from, not a big fan either. Yeah, I'm. I come from uh, a more competitive side of things. I'm used yep. to being able to rely on skill-based leaderboards no rather well, than in-game knowledge and okay. skill because the yes. thing is i've never considered myself an amazing player in death unchained but i do know the game pretty much inside and out which then means that i know how to manipulate that system as far as score is concerned some yeah. would call it clever play good play skill gap I'd call it play. well. <laughs> I'd, I'd well. No, I'd call it knowledge. It's game yeah, knowledge, yeah. and no, no, I do the same in this. You know, yeah. you're a better player than I am. I would have said Mystic is a better player. There'll be loads of players better than I am. There are in In Death Unchained as well. Loads of players better than I am, but I can still beat them, and yeah. that's part of the reason why. And not necessarily in dungeons. Definitely in IDU though. That's why I originally started doing the tips and tricks thing because I was like. When I first started doing VR, I've always been all right at computer games, but yep. what I didn't realize is how much I was being held back by just having a controller, or right. a, a, and, and to an even worse extent, mouse and keyboard. Ugh, fuck. <laughs> but when I got into VR and got controllers and found that I was able to move, and then when I got a quest and that I was completely untethered, all of a sudden I was like, oh, actually, I'm feeling pretty tasty in VR, you know. I think I can <laughs> think I can pull some stuff off here, so yeah. I can play at I'd say an above average level. But what I think is more important is as long as you can play to a normal level and you know the game inside out, I think that trumps skill. I really do. And yeah, I do too. Why? And that's why I started doing tips and tricks because I wanted cool. to try and I don't know, kind of from it started with in death unchained in an attempt to i don't know kind of level the playing field yeah spread the knowledge. i'd never yeah. want yeah i'd never want someone to be able to say ah yeah but you only won because you know this thing or you <laughs> knew this but or, now you all you can kept know this it. to yourself now yeah. i did do that in one tournament just to kind of put my name <laughs> on the map a little bit but <laughs> nice. that was the first and last time that i did it and the yeah, reason sure. being is because if i'd have given away what i'd learnt, then it just i would have been in threat to have been beaten what yeah. number one which again yep. now that i won one i don't really care about <laughs> and also number two it then would have meant that i would have had to spend a lot more time cementing my places within those boards and yep. i like the idea of just going on and getting to the top of the leaderboard in 5 10 15 minutes and being able to stay there without Same. having to put any effort in and yep. then you can do the other thing that i like which is where you start playing the mind games so but that's <laughs> yeah that's a, that's a separate i totally hmm. agree yeah so good stuff um i say we go check out some some dungeons we actually we go in and then we well, can you want to play the game uh, well, uh, I, mean, maybe... you, I told you i'm I... terrible 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we can we can kill a few enemies. Just just well, like one, maybe or two. one or two. Maybe yeah. one or two. As long Might as there's rough. game knowledge involved in this run, maybe. <laughs> Wait. So, oh yeah, you said you're using haste too, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put yes. haste on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, that, well, I I've got one. I've got haste level five, but it's one of the things that oh, I think okay. the I think the devs have been. Oh, I mean, I'm I, you know I've got my VR legs. This is I do find I've had some people report that this one's absolutely terrible for trying to get your VR legs in because <laughs> because of the dungeon-ness of it and the close yeah. walls and the various bits and pieces but you they've got the vignettes yeah they've they've got the vignettes and they've got the bits and pieces that you need to yep. be able to kind of level up your VR legs and yep. but I'd still like to be able to once I've got a perk and I can only really see haste being the other only one all the rest of them that you want at maximum but it would be nice and I think they might be adding it where you can adjust your amount of haste because of course as you know once you've spent those exo points you might be comfortable at say level three upgrade it to level four and be like whoa this is too fast and yep. then you're stuck you have to right. fucking start again <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. Oh, yeah, I think you, it should be you should be able to roll back, but yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, I'll be I'll be doing the super hasty haste, and uh, I'm surprised you don't there. actually. No, I do. I really, I, I, I do like 99 percent of the time. I just I recent, you... yeah. I recently tried without it, and I found it to be like, I mean, just as fun as with it, and and it it kind of feels more realistic almost because. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I, I can't always be sprinting this fast in real life if I'm actually running through a dungeon. So, yeah, if if I was just you're obviously not playing enough VR, on. mate. I'm super. Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I want to get yeah, on that beat saber, get on that pistol whip. That get you fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, no, I, I I do my underdogs and racket NX and all that good stuff. But, right uh, there, you go. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, do, do you have a favorite realm? Um. <sighs> I am actually quite boring. I really like the first one. Me too. No, I, I mean, same with I really Quaker like X. The underworld. I'm the same. Underworld. I like Sandstorm. Okay. And I like Vile Halls, and I like Lava Forge, but I think it's to do with Underworld just feels that, it just feels classic. Just feels yeah. like... The, it the looks good too. Classic. Yeah, it does. But yeah. It just feels like the classic Dungeons and dragons -y proper dungeon crawling yep. one. Whereas everything else just feels like not forced variants hey don't take my realms away from me but given the choice it's always going to be underworld always yeah yeah no i i agree i think we should do we should start with an underworld maybe we'll do multiple but uh yeah if, yeah. if it goes at the pace we're going now we probably will only get through one dungeon if that yeah no um, that's fine i talk a lot <laughs> don't you worry oh, but, uh, oh i yeah. know oh I, I know i think we talked about four or five do you think um I mean, whatever, uh, as long as you don't mind embarrassing yourself and I don't mind embarrassing myself. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, put it on. on uh, Five. Like, I'll have to just concentrate really hard. Squeeze my brain for all that in-game knowledge. Really hard Hopefully for it comes. But all the oh. thing is as well, now that I've just got level 60, now I'm in the market for trying to get some better weapons as well. So. Okay. Uh, Sweet. Yeah, you're, gonna, no, you're gonna go and buy some potions. Oh, no. that's not the true dungeon. I, no, 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 no. I'm actually not doing that. I'm I'm making sure that I, I don't have this this slowness perk turned on. What was my? I had a chest perk that was reducing. Yeah, slowness or what was? I don't even remember. Oh, it was the leg. It was the leg perk. Instead of haste, I had endurance, which reduced slowdown from poison and last stand, which is totally useless. And you're if you're in t level seven difficulty, not playing vile halls. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I'm I'm back on haste. I just wanted to double check what I had, and I'm doing my my what? chest perk of like less da melee damage, and I do more melee damage with my arms perk. So I'm just gonna be like whacking away at stuff. To be um, fair, we might as well pick up a few potions anyway. I've yeah, got some well. resurrections, resurrections for you, you know, yeah. just yeah, just, just to, in case. just to, uh, just to get you back up. Don't worry, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I can die as much as possible now. That's that's perfect. Uh, yeah. I'm getting exactly some. I want. I'm I'm just, let's have it noted. I'm getting some resurrection potions for you. Is this a foreshadowing of a turn of events? It probably fucking is. <laughs> yeah, we will see. <laughs> we will see. I, yeah, I might as well just make haste potion then. Visibility too, why not? If no, we, we don't need haste. We're going fast enough. 
Yeah, you're but right. No, you're the right. other into, thing that I will say into, is into I do I do see what you're saying as far as the haste thing because there is that whole. Do you really need to go that fast? Am I yeah. even making use of haste that much? A lot of the yeah. time, you can usually take a position, shoot your shots, and you're good to go. But yeah, you know, and you, don't you need to move around you tend, that fast. Right, and you tend to be as fast as the imps even without haste. Mm. And so you, mm. even if you can't run away like in a straight line, you can always go the opposite direction of their charge. And so hey. I was kind of liking the idea of you not having haste, if I was honest with you, because when the imps do come a run in, they'll go for you because I'll be a, <laughs> a silver tongue devil shaped blur in yeah. the distance. <laughs> being all heroic, oh, like. Man. Yeah, no, that's that's perfect. Um, <laughs> I, no, I, I actually do think I like not doing haste better just because for melee, especially, because it's easier to control myself as I'm like yeah. getting close to, it's easier to distance myself at the correct distance and like maintain I mean, that correct distance in melee. But if you are using a bow, then yes, it is much better to just be able to run away and then shoot the bow while you're just standing still or running away fast or whatever. So the one yeah. <laughs> thing that I would say is remember that you can like half push, like, you know, I'm, I'm at half. Yeah, speed, yeah, you can do that. and now I'm at three quarter speed, and now I'm at full. And then right. the thing is, I don't find it really too fast unless you're actually sprinting. And yeah. I'll be honest with you, I don't like. I, I'm not a fan of having to do things by clicking in because we all clench whilst yeah. we're doing things, and mm -hmm. they get touched. So. Yeah. But then having said that, for me, especially with haste on now, the things that you are clicking on, if they come on accidentally, it isn't game breaking. Like if yeah. I click in the right thumbstick, all it's gonna by accident, all it's gonna do is highlight you for me. If yeah. I click in little tip and trick there for anyone uh, paying yes, attention. Exactly. And <laughs> I can't help myself. I just can't they just slip out. Yeah, we'll and, we'll do the little, um, little test of like not seeing each other and clicking the, the, the highlight yeah, button. Yeah, yeah. And... <laughs> But oh, um, oh, what was I? No, we probably uh, should. I, I, I get don't even these. know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, come, up. come back up here to the chest real quick. And what have you, what have you got? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you were just, you, you were saying early about the, the sticking your weapon into things. Oh yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah you got your dagger. Have you got that dagger? Yeah. There oh, you it go. does. Yeah, it's. I awesome. never. It's just so satisfying. It's only daggers and axes. No swords. Yeah. No. Uh, I, I think just like anything else, I, like maces and hammers. Yeah, he's can't, right. Damn. Yeah, I thing reason. is, I've only just, I've only just started off handing myself okay. a dagger. Cool. Yeah, no, I, I do just love the loadout of dagger. having. I love having a sword and a dagger. Um, yeah. But I mean, I also love having just like two regular melee weapons. I don't know. It, I, I love it. really, <laughs> I really, really hope that they change the shield to be slottable yeah. on one of these. I hate. I, I don't want to lose this for anything, but I really want to bring a shield in. I really yeah. want to bring a shield in. And I, I don't yeah. and that, that I don't want a, a fucking target shield or a little buckler. I want the full fucking thing. All right. Yeah. And if you have to make it look mini here <laughs> so that it doesn't look stupid and then it goes and comes up when It'd I grab magic it. Shield. Yeah. I, right? I yeah. want sword and shield. I want sword and board play in yeah, I'm this also, game. But then I, I like I my range, and I don't. I, I'm a bow guy, man. I don't want to get rid of <laughs> get rid of these things. Yeah, they they could do some cool stuff with the secondary slots for sure. <laughs> nice in. I love these guys. Perfect. Oh, sweet. <laughs> right in the I was going to oh, poke behind him. you. Behind you. Ah! No. I was going to oh. poke him. <laughs> you were supposed to not kill him so I could do funny shit. See, I told you it would be a foreshadowing. <laughs> oh. oh. Sweet. And uh, and just another little tip that I'll uh, drop on your audience for you as well. A good teammate always covers the back of somebody who is dicking around. 
Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true, yes. There, there always has to be one guy that's Instead not... Instead of running around that. going, ah, behind <laughs> you! <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, well, Skull Key. Is this um, a save map, or did you go for a random one? Random one. Yeah, oh yeah, I didn't even ask you which one we should do, but yeah, I just... Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, i tell you, do you know what? Something I haven't seen yet, because I haven't been playing that way the last time that i played was when i was streaming i still okay. haven't seen the large mimic yet the tier three mimic oh wow i haven't the, seen it yet. the epic mimic yeah i have not seen the That's epic crazy. mimic wow. does it actually chase you around i hope it does oh man i wish it i, I don't want to spoil it. everything for you because nah, that's is... fine <laughs> have you actually seen it? Like, have you seen it in a video? Or no, anything? no. Well, that's okay. the thing is, I could as well. Yeah. I could go online, but I want to experience it. it myself. But yeah. then, you know, it'll probably be quite a strange thing for me to say, "Oh, I haven't even seen something that's been in the game for quite a while now." Yeah, and yeah, we... <laughs> it's just down to the fact that I haven't Ooh. really. Oh, hello. Oh, oh, this is the hardest oh, thing my, in the I, game. I, I tell you what, my uh, my eye arrow is going to be particularly nasty against this. Well. Actually, you say that, JJ, but this is one of this is one of the best rooms for it. I can show you. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> hey there, Silver Tongue Devil, doing tips in the ticks. If you have a golem and you happen to be in this room, there's a nice, easy way for us to oh, shoot that golem. <laughs> and my beautiful assistant will can, will stop jumping bombs and follow me. Oh, okay, sure. Here we are, up on the top. So, so uh, yeah, everybody just... will probably be able to see what we're going to do now. Oh, genius. I mean, he wants to hit us, doesn't he? But it's he not sure happening, does. is it? No. Yes, not. And then when he goes down, can uh, put go. you oh, in him. No. Oh, I got ice. Oh shoot! I don't even have my right weapons out. What am I doing? What are you doing? There we I go. Don't know. I don't job. know. I, so I like I is... grabbed my back for my bow and then I tried to hit like they were hammers. That was just yeah. like absolutely. I don't know. <laughs> I got ice when I landed on his back. I didn't realize the ice one did that. Yeah, so there that is another weird. way that you can deal with that as well. And again, these are all the things that never make it into my tips in thirty ticks because I'd rather give people tips and tricks as opposed to kind of exploits that trivialize things like Agreed. the you know the the power level in that we did on a, a stream recently <laughs> but the yeah. other way that you can deal with the golem is if you come into another room as mm -hmm. long as it isn't a lock-in room if you yep. come into another room he can't punch you he'll just stay there because one of the things that i'm rubbish at in this game and i and my top moderator is really good at is von <laughs> that is is yep. uh, throwing bombs she can fucking hit stuff 50 meters away in vr with wow. pretty much anything that you can put in her hand Impressive. whereas i can't hit barns that are next to me so if i can make it so the enemy doesn't move and all i have to do is a simple roll then i'll do it and the thing is even the simple roll i'll fuck up on occasion as well it was probably a good day for me when they took out friendly fire on bombs so yeah, yeah. <laughs> That is funny. Yeah, no, I, and actually, do you know if these rooms, because sometimes when you go into a room, it, it locks the rooms or it locks the, the exits. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what triggers that, if that's just totally random or if it's like based on specific enemies or whatever, but. I um, think it's random. Yeah, I, I think it depends. I think it's room dependent. I think like uh, the random generate, if, if you always have a save dungeon, then each room will that that does close it'll close every time that you go through it yeah. that's what yeah. i think i, I mean kind oh, of well, well yeah it, yeah right. a safe dungeon so this is what i was talking about about trying to find that perfect map so you can speed run if you want to level up quick is you want you want dungeons where it doesn't have any lock-in rooms because they always seem to be exactly the same in a saved one as you say yep. so we don't actually need a key to trigger Mimics, uh, you do, do. We? you do. You yeah. do need a key, do you? You basically need to like let the. Oh, you, you have to let him have sniff a key. it. Uh, but see, that, yeah, so so that shows you how many mimics oh. I've uh, laid up against. <laughs> yeah. But then oh, this and is, there is but, a tier one. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah it's tier one. We'll, we'll find Up something the top, else. Isn't there? Um, how much dungeon right. have we got? Oh, we got uh, pretty dungeon. It's it's we? a yeah, it's a pretty big dungeon. Oh, that's right. You room. know where all the keys are, don't you? So we're good. Uh, yeah, a good amount of keys. Yeah, not all of them. <laughs> Perfect. Ah, see, hmm. that's fucking teamwork. Oh yeah, that is perfect. <laughs> how you do it? Oh, oh we got the key up. here. Let's that's um, up. yeah, let's let's go back so, to. Hang on, because I don't. Is it? We haven't got the map, sure. are we? So some, because my memory's terrible. Something yep. that I always like to do is I do want to like clear this room because we'll probably have something to deal with, and also see if there's any exits off of it. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fair. Again, this is more of uh, memory issues as far as I'm concerned. I'm famous for them. Because even though this is the last place that we're going to be coming, or the last place that we're going to be coming, so normally I would do the same as you, but I do make a point, yeah, because there is a door here. So, oh, there's one. Yeah, there's a door down below. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, we can go into this door first. So I was gonna see what's in this one. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. We got. Yeah. In so we have got a guaranteed passage. key in this one and a chest. Ooh, yeah. There should be a chest, shouldn't there? Maybe I remember the first time I did this, and it was fucking great. Yeah. This was. This is oh. one of my favorite experiences. In this. It was this. This alone. When I got hold. When I begged for the beta of this game off of Mr. Scary and I was like please let me play it early so I can experience it and you know yeah. start putting things together for it and it was this and I was like oh man <laughs> yeah, this and then, really and does then it. afterwards when you realize that no enemies are going to come and uh yeah except when I you mean, open I know, barrels we had some yeah, spiders I in know, there <laughs> but that's not the same is it you don't no. have any zombies in the darkness yeah. and i'll be honest with you ghost. it's still oh, something ghost. that i want ghost would be great it's still something that i want to see because it then just makes this room a little bit more threatening it makes this a little bit more scary and it also means as well that you actually have to work together in a, as a team and this is it's one of the things that i've spoken about previously in a lot of cooperative games is well they are cooperative in that there are three people playing together on the same team but yeah. they're not really cooperative it's just three people playing and they yeah. happen to be on the same side <laughs> for me a cooperative is right guys i've only got my sword and my torch i can't use my range you're gonna have to protect me as we're going through because <laughs> anything could come you know that's yeah. cooperative whereas right. just everyone just running through the dungeon and killing everything well that's not very exactly. cooperative yeah I yeah mean, definitely give is. us some some like down or uh disadvantages basically yes. like holding that torch we need those kinds of disadvantages to well we need really... threat to extenuate yeah, threat. those disadvantages exactly but so for me like one of the things i would love to see in this game still oh i've lost my and i'll come back to that I, I was definitely onto something then. I was okay. about something else. <laughs> Fair enough. I was thinking Ooh. about keys. Got a key. Yay, good. Can you Got hear me all right, by the way? I, yeah, yeah, I feel... yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this 30% uh, this volume is, I think, maybe a little bit loud. But I, I... I think I like the twenty percent better, but I'm I uh I'm gonna I stick know, with I, it for this one. I can hear you fine, even over okay. the sound of my own powerful voice. And that's <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah. The the question is, can you hear me over the sound of a, a screaming imp in your face? Yes. Okay. Easily. Sweet. Sweet. That's that is always good. Oh. Chip. Oh, jeez. Wow. Um, that was a distraction sword technique. <laughs> Not a terrible throw. I do, I, I do, I do see a lot of people, you know, throwing weapons in this. And I'm like, I like the idea of that. It does feel very gauntlet. The whole throwing multiple weapons, and I think that's what the devs were going through on that. I just, yeah. 
I've done that in this, and I've done that a lot in Asgard's Wrath as well, and it just oh, it does my elbow in, man. Mm, Getting old. Mm, yeah. Getting yeah, no, that's old. fair. Yeah, no, the, the throwing weapons is definitely one of the things that just sold me on this game, because... Oh, it's great. I, it's great. I, if, you, yeah, if, I, if you like it, and you're in with it, yeah, off you go. Lead on. There could be dangers in the darkness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there, there should also be a key somewhere in this darkness. <laughs> I but like, know you know, that, that would be, if you come back here, that would be the simple one. As we're walking through, you hear the moans of the zombies. And then as we go, and you see them in there, and if you don't deal with them, as we go past this, or maybe a plate activates yeah, this, and then they yeah. come out. I want more of that. Some of the rooms Same. actually do it where the enemies don't just spawn in straight away on enter. They yeah. like wait for you to pull a lever or activate. There's only yeah, a there's... few rooms that do it. Right, no. right. There, there's one where you have to like hit a target to activate it. Yep. That one's pretty cool. Oh, actually, come. here, come back here real quick. Oh, Let's do this key. tier two. Yeah, I got. I finally right. got the key. I found it. My life is complete. Fennec. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I actually, now I pulled out here. the key oh, and I made it sniff, and it did not. It didn't sniff. You already had it. You yeah, already had it. it legendary <laughs> blade. Need stuff. Um, I remember what my point was on the cooperative side of things. Okay. I'll lead on. Lead on. There could be dangerous in the dark. I've already yes. explained. <laughs> if only there was. But then that's the thing, is that's one of the things that made this just feel so fucking epic when I played it for the first time. I was like, Same. do I have to light the torch? Oh, my God, I do. Do I have to go in there? Oh, fucking hell. And I can't use my bow now. Oh, shit. Yeah. I hope there's nothing <laughs> in there. And it was a very slow exploration of the darkness. So, but that was the other thing. Like, so going back to what I was talking about cooperative, I remembered what I was thinking about now. Yeah. Going back to cooperative, and I wish there was some sort of system. I can see why they haven't put it in because, you know, some people do play in and enjoy this game in single player and are not yeah. really interested in the multiplayer. But I'd love to see something where, for instance, you know, we've got three players, and what's the simplest trap or simplest, you know, puzzle? that you can do when you've got multiple players oh well there's three pressure pressure pads exactly. before the thing opens so dave you need to stand over there and dave too because you know i'm very imaginative with my friends names <laughs> you need to stand over there and then i dave three will stand on this pressure pad and then yeah. that will open the door or activate the trap or something so Again, actually you can't do that because of solo mode but yep yep but that, I mean, that could be like another whole mode in and of itself of like yeah. a cooperative or a puzzle mode. But ha have yeah. you heard of the game It Takes Two? I have heard of it. I haven't played, I haven't played it. it. Okay, no. okay. Yeah, yeah. But I just as an example, that game is a really, really good cooperative like requirement game. Like you have to have two people as yeah. the name suggests. Yeah. And yeah, an I interaction. Mean, yeah, yeah, you ha and and you depend on your teammate. You cannot complete it without your teammates. Um, and so, yeah, if, if they did similar mechanics, I'm not saying like they steal that game, but there are some pretty cool similar mechanics in that. Uh, I, I actually I played like this web, this browser based game as well when I was mm. younger called uh, I think it was like Fire Boy and the Ice Girl or something or Fire fire and ice something but it was just yeah. like a 2d platform type game that yeah. you just go through these little puzzles and yeah you also are required to uh just have like two people doing it you can't just have one person and and like you use the same keyboard that, that was kind of like a yeah. nostalgic game but that then was... that's it that that for me but again maybe that's an old school gamer thing and i don't know how old that game was but yeah. maybe it's like i think cooperative i think something where you actually have to work together like you know after the fall is a cooperative game the one where you're running through and just shooting zombies yeah but is it really cooperative you just four people running around together shooting stuff right. yeah there's a little bit of healing and management and various bits and pieces but yep. like um i look at a game like PUBG. now that's not a cooperative mm. game but you do have to work together manage loot and do various bits and pieces yep. but that's got something that i would love to see in something like this where it's not a requirement but it would give you a bit of an advantage and if they could work that into this that'd be great the cooperative climb so yeah. in PUBG, one person can do this and then <laughs> to get somebody up higher than you can naturally jump or get to right. and then the other person when they're down there can put a hand down and then pull the other person up. Yeah. I, I, 
I don't know cool. if that's even doable in VR. I think it would be a fucking cool mechanic. I'm sure it'd be hard I'd, to pull off. Right, and it'd probably I, I bet end it would. up just being a button press. But, <laughs> But hey. it, no, it sounds cool. And and things like picking up your teammate. I mean, this is kind of just like getting into the weeds here. But like we can pick each other up now by just holding down the A button. But yeah. just being able to like grab your teammate Rub if they're the crotch, on the floor, maybe or yeah, they're slap like them about the face. <laughs> 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 or or just like pour the drink into their mouth and like force it down <laughs> to their mouth yeah that that could be something but uh no I, I think it would be cool to have like those cooperative elements where you do yeah. have to like I, we can't even high five like like you yeah, should be I able know. to and have you can that. see the thing is you can in other games exactly there is detection yeah. most but then games, this is yeah. the thing this is what Good games, not most not games most like games, knock games, no. knock no. is one that i know that the high yeah. five you racket can do. nx does and really then of course well yeah. being able to high five each other in the air and stuff like that even yeah. that would feel like Just you like know everyone has by. presence yeah, yeah right everyone has presence and, and like handshakes this feel in touch yeah Handshake mm -hmm. still hasn't been done well in a game. We should be able to put our hands together, both press and grip, automatically and it finally, moves and it. And then, of course, you know, you can go for each other's wrists and do the warrior grip, or yeah. you could do it that way and do that grip. And, yeah. and yeah, I don't know. But then this is the thing is, this is the problem with all of these things is, I've got all of these ideas. I've got all of these things that I want implemented, and I'm sh fucking certain devs do as well yeah. but then this is the thing from somebody Technical who doesn't limitation. program yeah. talking to somebody who does exactly. it's like uh We're you know experts. it's like me going uh, oh yeah you know that great single player game that you got could you go into the dev tools and press the add multiplayer uh, <laughs> button in there would that be doable could you just right. do that because i don't fucking i know a bit of programming but i don't understand it so yeah, yeah. there's got to be a reason why they haven't done these things and i would imagine Definitely the payoff is not worth the amount of time that they would have have to invest yeah. to do it or it, it doesn't yeah. work with the system that they have and they're pretty I mean, big let's about face it, they've done a too. very yeah they've yeah. done a very good job of the very system good. so yep. if we yep. have to do without high fives yeah do I, I think but like, then I, draw you I can almost... draw you draw your hammer oh yeah we can yep that we works. collisions so that's it's pretty yeah so but it's, it's something. So I think at, at some point, I, I don't see why they wouldn't add something like a handshake or, a, or not a handshake, but a, a high five or a fist bump. That seems yeah. like something that, I mean, yeah. even from a non-coder perspective, I think that is maybe not easy, but it's definitely possible to put in the game. And see, I would imagine I part of the problem is someday. when you do do that and grab and then move away or move yeah, yeah, the forward grab and that weird. that's what and yeah. then all of a sudden you've got that long arm of Disconnect the law for and, each yeah, yeah so that's yep, probably yep. the problem it takes uh, away from actually, that embodiment are we, are we standing in front of this Here. chest because you've got a key oh thanks <laughs> yep yeah <laughs> go ahead uh, uh foreshadowing oh no <laughs> not a mimic that's sad i was ready to sc i have my best girlish scream ready in advance <laughs> you know just so that we all know that it would have been purposely uh, done yeah no that would have been great here let, let, let's go over here i i think we skipped this this little room i'm Maybe gonna have to play with you more often jj oh. you sound like you know where you're going i heck yeah i do we got the map too sweet stuff man this game's so easy it just makes everything in the ice Right? I feel like I'm cheating sometimes. So, like, <laughs> that, I suppose that's another discussion to have as well, is that as far as traits go, yeah, poison's all well and good. And as I understand from what you guys have been doing as far as dungeon defense is concerned, fire, fire is considered is the, way the trait go. to have because it yep. does more damage, so you can put those bosses down even quicker. You, you can do one-shot kills instead of having to freeze them and then kill them next, yeah. Yeah. But then from the basis of, so yeah, that's again though, that's a kind of forced meta as opposed to yep. the actual. And so ice is still king because I'd say it still works more against everything. It's, mm. For me, it's because it works against everything in that it just fucking stops the threat dead. And if Except we're talking bosses. about, well, uh, oh yeah. yeah, no, it doesn't freeze them. It used Not to. Not anymore. Exactly, yeah. It used to. <laughs> Yep, but, uh, that's 
that's one of the things they had to do because it was so like it was unquestionably the best by yeah. far because you I remember bosses and kill them. But I remember a time even when I was at a high level and knew what I won. I remember a time when the ice wasp, or for that matter, any of the giant wasps, used to appear and they were fast and they were deadly. <sighs> And they used to fucking end runs. Yeah. If it was an ice one, you were fucked because our mm -hmm. ice didn't work on them. And yep. unfortunately, I think enough people complained and they just toned the Lowered shit down out of the that. health. And yeah. I don't know. I like the idea. Like, I like the idea of me and you or like good players or even like a couple of good players, a bad player or what have you. Being able to go into a dungeon and not be in a formality that we're going to win, I like the idea of threat, but... Same, same. I suppose when you've played this enough, it's not there anymore, so how do you get it back? And one of the ways is, you know, to start imposing things on yourself, but I've never really been one for that in games either. Right, just, and... Uh, it's a weird kind of. it's a weird balance that the devs have to strike too where they want to make this game accessible enough to the people that just want to be able to complete it and they struggle yeah. to complete it but then they also want to try somewhat to cater to like those more hardcore players maybe like myself like Royal Rush just you people that have played more and and know what they're doing we also want a challenge but you got to strike that balance and not divide the people too much like you were saying but you say know what you were doing but i did almost get downed by the very first enemy i mean nothing to do with you not covering my back but you know we'll talk about that another time <laughs> that was you just being distracted but no <laughs> but no, no I, I think you yeah i think you're spot on the money the the see i like the idea of a realistic mode but then the mm -hmm. other problem with doing that as well is you then start setting this divide up between the yeah. casual and exactly. the not i'm not going to say pro but the casual and then whatever we are the casual yeah. and the not so casual yeah. i'm happy to play on either side of that fence Same. i don't think the population on this game is going to be big enough or even maybe ever big enough to be able to cater for multiple so you never want to split it up and i've seen games do it in the past which is why it would worry me which why, why i think the slider on slider off would be a um, a better shout and we've already seen them doing things that one player can have but others don't yeah with spiders and the arachnophobia mode so yep. it's definitely doable it's just making sure they uh get it right are you excited for the spear i forgot to ask you that oh, and man. also where are we going uh yeah yeah so I'm well, following for, you. One, for one we have a map we can just look at as long as you're not you're not stealing it every time we throw it on the ground. <laughs> I was trying to point at you. <laughs> yeah, I know. But yeah, so we've got that chest. I don't have any. Oh, I do have a key. But we have. Oh, we've just got. We yeah, we've got the skull key. We've got to go back here then. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I'm. There might be. Let Let's open one of those chests. I mean. Oh yeah, there is chest left in there. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I'm at sixty now. I got that very fresh recently. So now I do actually want to be opening chests. Oh yeah. I still true. don't know. Because I've always assumed that you might as well wait until your max level before you start doing anything, really, because you're just going to find better weaponry. Exactly. But I think there's a cutoff point at, like, 55 where you're going to be getting uh, the best anyway. But I don't, I don't know. I, Maybe. I don't know for certain. Yeah. So um, was one of those a big chest? Was that one? I think th this one's definitely a tier one. So let's let's That's just go to the next one. Maybe find it's a tier two. Then. Yeah. Maybe we will be lucky. Uh, oh, it's just like it right was. around the corner, right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Perfect. Uh, we didn't have a mimic yet. All right. Here nope. we go. Oh, yeah. Sniff, sniff. <laughs> oh, stop being a pussy and doing the sniff, sniff. Just put the key in and get shocked, would you, man? Jesus. Uh, I'll try. I'll try. Oh man. I can't. Thing is, I. The one thing that I would say is when they did the when we were trying the the beta, um, mm. the devs were kind enough to not tell us about mimics, or at least I didn't get the yeah, memo. I and I made a point of not looking. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. And yes, the first thing that I said, the first thing that I said to Scary is, the thing is, it's so good the way that you've done it. But you know, I'd love it if the mimics attacked you because that's Same. what mimics do. But we could say that the mimics here are bolted down for dungeons of eternity reason.
But <laughs> what I would like, uh, what I said to him straight away when he was doing it, was just like, Jump it was ass. fantastic, the first one. Yeah. And then opening every chest thereafter, all of a sudden, instead of, oh, reward, reward, was, uh, and then <laughs> you get that complacency, and then, bam, another mimic. And what yeah. I found is that when we were doing the betas, the mimics were coming out too often. You get, like, two, maybe three per dungeon in a dungeon really? that had a decent amount of chests. Oh, wow. That was my okay. experience. So oh. I instantly said to, I instantly said to Scary, I was like, yeah, tone that shit down because yeah. having less is just as good as having more so, because yeah. if it happens so rarely then what happens is when it does happen i think this is one of the only things that would ever give me anything close to a jump scare in a vr yeah. game <laughs> and yeah. it's because you forget well i think it's, it's like because of my memory i think it's because yeah. of my memory and i'm like uh, how many I think it's how everyone. many have we open yeah yeah like if it, yeah, if it was like mimic every two chests, yeah. or like you're saying, or like you're saying, <laughs> I keep pointing and grabbing, or like you're saying that like you know, um, oh we haven't had one yet, so you're yeah. waiting for one, and that's just as good as every chest being a mimic or every other chest being a mimic. It's that dread, it's that sensation, yeah. it's that oh remember that thing that used to mean cool stuff we're gonna get cool stuff uh it could be not so cool stuff yeah anymore. yeah no i i also think that like um i i mean i think that that is a great thing that we do have that intense like uh not knowing of whether it's gonna be a mimic but then i i do kind of wish that we got better stuff from it like just getting a resurrect potion when it's we can, ideal yeah, we can have resurrect potions, like, just finding them from regular chests or making them in before the dungeons. Like, whatever. Um, I do wish that I could choose... Like, maybe we could choose out of two weapons instead of... Or actually, wait, I, I kind of just spoiled something for you. It, forget that I said that. Um, yeah. But we, we can have... We can have more interesting <laughs> rewards from tier two chests. Uh, I, don't worry, I've already forgotten. I told you about my memory. <laughs> How many weapons did you say? Nice. Oh, nothing. Nice. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I think that there could just be like better or more rewards from mimics rather the than thing less is, Well, that segues into a nice other conversation as well. The thing is, resurrection potions could be really useful if when you went down to fall damage, when you went down to traps, or when you went down, you had to be either revived with holding the A mm. button or had to be revived with a resurrection. And if we then yeah. took your idea or, you know, or that implementation of reviving is a little bit more of a process than just standing by and pressing A and it's kneeling down and you have to do, like, do the gestures and or you know yeah but cut their neck and pop the fucking healing potion in or something along that or rub their rub their balls cut their balls or whatever it is yeah. get your your friend up off of the ground but if they made that a little bit more intricate then all of a sudden it'd be like actually no that's a haste potion oh well never mind i get those mixed up all the fucking time yeah. actually then all of a sudden Resurrection potions are really good because you get rid of that quick time event. You get rid of that button press. You get rid of that risk of having yeah. to do it. And right, then right. if you can make it so it happens to the average player more. Because it's one of the things that has always irked me on this game. If you fall off from something really high and I Just hear that bone back. snapping yeah. leg noise, yep. I want to be going... Oh right, I gotta go back and resurrect burnt pan. Not ha, ha you fell off and now you just can resurrect. It feels <laughs> yeah. so unimpactful. Yep, you know? Yep, I agree. And yeah, again, that... um it's not that I want to make things harder, but it's more to do with the fact that I don't know, impact, you know? If you yeah. if you're if if you've got an idiot on your team and they're constantly falling off of things, well then, you know, you've got to go and help them out. Right, right. As yeah. opposed to, uh, yeah, Dave's fallen off the ledge again. Ha ha. <laughs> oh, little shit. Oh, you, you got a little shit up there. Okay. I did have a little. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Jump scares yeah. when. No, but I, I totally agree about that whole uh, cliff. Like, you, you should be dying or at least, uh, like, 
you need to be resurrect after you fall off a cliff or die from fall damage or something. I yeah. think that that should be the case no matter what. Maybe yeah. if you're like in tier one or tier two, maybe you give a little leeway and they yeah, just, I mean that like, would like they, be the they way changed to do it. it. They changed it from respawning at a hundred health to respawning at like fifty or mm -hmm. I forgot the exact number. Maybe it's fifty, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, like so they could do something like that. But I do yeah. think at least at least in the harder difficulties make it so that you're just downed and you're crawling on the See, floor after because I, 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 I knew i wanted to have this conversation with you because obviously i know you kind of feel the same way that is that you want that to be more impactful and it yeah. should be we're in a dungeon this is a dangerous environment you know yeah but one of the thing, the other thing that I would like to see as well, again, it, but then this is the problem as well. Is it impactful and is it worth the time that it would take to do? But I'd yeah. love to see something along the lines of if a player falls off into the abyss or if they get spike trapped or something along those lines that would cause instant death. But I mean, with spike traps, well, then that's another fucking problem, isn't it? You've got to try and resurrect them <laughs> without getting spiked yourself. Yeah. If you're on my stream, though, it's probably me that has caused the spiking. So that wouldn't be so much of an issue. So let's concentrate <laughs> on the falling into the pit. I'd like to see a mechanic kind of like Left for Dead, where if you fall into the pit, then you get, I don't know, captured by the dungeon's inhabitants and okay. then yeah. one of the rooms that you may have previously unlocked your partner is then a captive in so you then need I love a that. key to be able to go and open that door maybe a little quick time event to untie them or whatnot and then that they're back so in the cool. game instead yeah. of just fall off the pit respawn fall off the pit respawn hey guys look what i'm doing i'm dick and fall off the pit yeah, give respawn. us something to work for yeah definitely right? i I and think then, that, that, and, that would be awesome. And then all of a sudden, talking about shit, talking about <laughs> impactful. Oh, yeah, thanks for stay, standing and laughing, teammate. Um, <laughs> instead of them talking on the, the idea of impactful. Sweet. Yeah, talking on talking on the idea of impactful all of a sudden then you're taking your time when you're walking across those precarious paths where you can yeah. fall off and then all of a sudden the devs could maybe change some of the levels so instead of very wide paths it's very thin paths oh, and so yeah. you really want to be taking your time because if you all fall off and get captured well that's fucking dungeon over mate right. and if even one of you falls off well Oh, fucking hell, have we got any keys left? No, now we need to find one to go and get Dave. And yeah. if you can't find a key, well, then Dave's going to be sat in that fucking room for a very long time until you complete the dungeon, you know? Yep, so... yep. And it, it would be cool if, like, because I, I don't think it would be fun to just, like, be sitting in a, a room, like, dead I, for the whole game. It I wouldn't, do think, but you Ah, I got hey, he jumped on the back of my head. I just saw that. That was pretty funny. Uh, but um, yeah, no, I I think that it would be probably ideal if that person that gets stuck um is able to do some sort of spectate feature, like like be able to oh, spectate. Oh yeah, his no, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, and, they, and they that's were something they'd have to work on first before when they you were doing like when you were doing the interview with Quaker. They were yeah. talking about some sort of dungeon master or at least the spectator mode, spectator weren't mode, they? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, oh, I'm going to spectate. Bye. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> then all of a sudden. That would be sweet. But then the other thing as well that it would then potentially bring in as well is, I mean, until they have either because as you say, they're probably going to have to put the spectator mode into it before they do that. But it. Yeah. But also give like you know people like us who make videos an easy out of like oh actually no you go and do that battle I'll spectate <laughs> you know <it's> like, <laughs> yeah instead exactly. of instead of what I just done there silver tongue devil was impaled oh was he oh, okay <laughs> I would have much preferred that to go burnt pan was captured burnt pan is now a captive burnt pan is being tortured by the inhabitants <laughs> of eternity that would be so okay. cool yeah yeah no i i totally agree if that if that is something that they can do then but eventually the, 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 i would love to the see minor it. 
that you know they're small things that could yeah. potentially as you said they're small things but they could also potentially cause more issues because you know yeah. dave might not dave might not be very good at the game and dave may <laughs> only have 20 minutes to do a quick dungeon and if he's spending 15 of those 20 minutes locked in a room but then me i would say well i'm sorry dave that's your fucking fault but <laughs> hey that's just me i like there yeah. to be weight and impact but then i do too but, but then this is the other thing as well. You could tie that in with the friendly fire option or have that as an option. But then why make a feature that not everyone's going to engage with? So I'm trying to strike that balance, and I don't think you ever will. I want yeah. a hardcore experience from this, and I know you do as well. But right. at the end of the day, you've got to do what the masses want. And... <laughs> yeah, no, but I, I mean, I do think that, that friendly fire is one of the easier things that they can do because they already have done things like the snowball fight, which was really cool. And they and did bombs, really well, in my opinion. Bombs, yeah, exactly. got one? No, so, I haven't got one. I was going to drop a bomb and go, like, normally <laughs> that would hurt us. Normally that would take us down to fifth. There you go. And now it does nothing. Yeah. I remember I talked <laughs> to Miss Scary about that, and I was like, any, uh, any you know, chance you'll put friendly fire into the game? We're already getting damage from bombs. And he was like, mm, I'm probably going to be taking that out. Oh, fucking <laughs> hell. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think they're like against trolls, and and there could be lots of trolls, and I, I don't know the exact reasons, and maybe there, maybe there is more harm that comes from friendly fire for most people than not. Um, but I do think that yeah, it would be pretty easy to just make it a toggle in private lobbies, just like we yeah. said. So yeah, yeah, that would be cool. But then like but also then that spectator. Yeah. The spectator feature we talked about, I, I think that that is something that they probably would have to put a little bit more effort into. And that's something that, however, the, the more effort would, would probably pay off more and it would keep more people engaged and it would be just like a cool feature that they could integrate into like the outpost or the mega social lobby at some point yeah. or whatever else. They can do a lot more with mm. that spectate mode rather than i mean friendly fire you can you well can there's see, like there, they, there you go there. there's the idea if we got that social hub together it could be because then of course you can start vetting people already you know oh i know oh i've played with that burnt pan guy before i know that if i go into a dungeon with him i'm gonna have a hell of a time you could turn traitor on me in that dungeon if you wanted to <laughs> but then of course the person that because i imagine the social hub's going to be along the lines of oh yeah lads i'm going to set up a game the two people want to join me yeah sure yeah sure um we're going to be going for friendly fire we're going to be going for catches on we're going to be going for level seven dungeon and we're going to be going for that and then set it all up in yeah. the social hub so if people are like oh well fucking hell, i just wanted a casual experience fuck you guy you can find someone else i almost guarantee you you'll find somebody else in that social hub either way me 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 because me. <laughs> yeah. it'll probably be me <laughs> right right no, I, I am really excited for the social hub too, and I, I mean, I think it's coming up in the, the next update. I don't know for sure, but I, I think I, I pretty. don't. I was, I was doing the, I was doing I mean, again. I don't know how much I can say, and I know we're not really. Yeah, that, the that's age, always the fine line you gotta point, draw. Yeah, <laughs> at this point, I think you know a lot more about the future of this game than I do. I'm, I'm going off of stuff that I heard a while back right and right. Uh, was asked to keep to myself but now i think you've talked about yeah pretty much all of it and then some with quaker so it's you know it's out there already so it's not like secret squirrel information yeah, but, yeah. oh this is the yeah this is the end room i didn't even realize um but yeah yeah uh, i mean you, you could always mention something and if it's something that i am pretty sure oh you can edit it out yeah you can edit it out the magic of editing i forget the magic, the magic of, of editing not so live recording what, yeah. <laughs> what basically i said to quake when i was doing that anniversary video the night yeah. uh, i don't know if you know what nightmare is but the nightmare star one and um i said to quake like oh i want to tease some of the things in the description um what's coming in the the thing and he literally put spears new rooms and customization something else that i can't remember oh the player storage and and more is what he put and i threw okay. in the social hub because i know you've talked about that and i know that's coming not necessarily yeah. in the next update but i think the one after that i know they're they're busy right um right. but yeah no uh, I, I think that's all uh 
public yeah, information. So I, th- I think, point, so, yeah. yeah, I think the social hub's probably expected to be coming at the end of the month and then spear some new bits and pieces and a few bits and bobs. So I think the next update is going to be very similar to the two handed sword thing. Yeah. Um, in a few new rooms, a little bit more customization and a new weapon. I do hope they go back and give the two handed sword another pass over. And I yeah, do hope I do as well that we could maybe sacrifice having both swords and dual wielding for just one two handed sword slot and then get rid of both. I, I know oh. I want a lot, but you know, I, for me, you want if your I bow could have and your long just, sword. I want a bow, and if I could have just a two handed sword, or even better, a sword and a shield, I would be very happy. But yeah. having to give this up for things that are nice for the things that I really really like but then this is where you put yourself restrictions on and like all right lads we're just gonna do a, a sword and board play and we're gonna get the old testudo formation on and uh, uh, sort of thing <laughs> you know yeah. and so you it, can do that it puts the the responsibility of I, I guess like having fun and testing things out to the player rather than the dev enforcing it to you but mm. I do think there is merit to the devs enforcing it to us and yeah. I, I think it would be gold. like that's why I talk so much about challenges 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 I would love to see yeah, yeah. challenges I'd because... like to, I'd, I would like challenges not sandbox right. but we'll talk about that soon oh yeah we still we still got that that's on the radar <laughs> oh like, yeah, no. the big one the big one <laughs> yeah but like Sal and challenges where it just gives you these set weapons that you can use for a specific dungeon and mm. like go off and do your thing and yeah. so you don't really or have to worry about like, finding the ideal Load out or whatever so and yeah you all go into the dungeon unarmed each open a chest oh i've got the fucking sword i'm the magic guy usually <laughs> well what yeah. am i supposed to do with this says the dagger thrower you know that, that sort of thing and yeah. then yeah, i've seen it's the 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 mode i'm sure a lot of people who may be watching or what have you have played onward now, Onward is a fantastic yeah. game, and I like it, but mm-hmm. it's mainly PvP, it's a very competitive game, it's mill sim at the end of the day, and it's very yep. full on. But right. one of the things that I found it, and it's another one of those games as well where you kind of select your loadout and you get familiar with a very good weapon, or at least I do anyway, and you just use that. Same as I do in here, I just use the bow. And yeah. as far as Onward is concerned, they and they they brought in this mercenary mode and what mercenary mode is if you haven't played it is you basically drop in on mission one and you've all got a very limited selection of pistols to choose from and that's it you then okay. have a choice of three dynamic missions like those that. missions have a primary or a secondary or a random reward you vote on them as a team as to which one you're going on when you mm-hmm. complete the mission you get the rewards and then the missions get harder and harder and harder and yeah. for me it was such an eloquent way but all of a sudden you to be using a pistol instead of the rifle that you always fucking use right. and the low and you always have body armor and you always have extra stims and you always have two frag grenades and you always yeah. have this and you always have that and all of a sudden you're having to use things like an smg when yeah. you normally are a sniper and then you can also try and start getting and then the arguments happen in the lobby don't they because <laughs> your sniper wants to go on the mission where the sni- there's a sni- his favorite sniper rifle reward but of course the mission that i am going to convince everyone to go on is the one where i get the beastie lmg that i want and yeah. That is then like a different kind of cooperative in that mm. it's time limited, you, you selecting which mission you go on. And I yep. I don't know, I I think they should rip that off and put it into this. And I'd love that. That'd be great. And you you know, you're building up your party's equipment and you can swap it round between each other or something. Yep. And going from level to level to level. But the that problem cool. that we've got is way that it's set up at the moment the way that it's set up is there is an instance like we're in now dungeon delving there is an instance of soul hunting and there is an instance of you know the pyramid side of things right the the exo point chasing game and yeah. so put something in that that is similar to this what i'm talking about is a completely different mode as opposed to another thing within what we have yep. so uh, it probably won't 
I can yeah. wish. I can hope. No, I mean that that sounds like something that could be cool. And and yeah, like and it, do you know what I don't that think is, it... Burn Pam? It's a roguelike mode and not yeah. a fucking sandbox. Fuck your sandbox. So anyway, Fair you were saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah <there's... laughs> I, I do think there's definitely some like you can do many different implementations of a roguelite mode. Like it doesn't have to be exactly how you described it, or I mean it wouldn't be mm. onward, but it it yeah. could be like they could put different elements into it. And I think basically no matter how they do that, that could be really cool. And yeah. so yeah. yeah, I mean For me it's just trying to tr trying to make the unfamiliar used. Like, yeah. you yeah. know, no, People and don't definitely use like magic pull a out lot in this game. Yeah, yeah. There's you know, so I, much. I, I, I... There is so much content in this game that you yeah. that many people they'll just like find a weapon that they like and they will stick with it and mm. and that's great and all and like it's still really yeah you you love your bow and it is really satisfying but then there are so many other satisfying mechanics in this game like the two handed sword which like yep. you can't have a bow to use the two handed sword and the the hammers and the swords are different and daggers yeah, are, the they act <gasps> differently as well <gasps> we've already spoken and, about the <laughs> <laughs> Right. right and so yeah, there's just there is so much stuff that people yeah. could be forced to explore almost yep. and it, it wouldn't feel like they're being forced because they're choosing to do that mode to that play that mode to do but it. then yeah. all of a sudden you but see so going back to what we were talking about i was just thinking then that because it's again it's something that i've also thought because the perks are good in this game but i would like there to be more choice like i yeah. definitely think there should be something for the magic user and how there is oh, totally. not at the moment is criminal like even yeah. if it was just something like you can now carry five gems or more you know, gem, or more your shots gem, gem charges last yeah ja last twice as long yeah. or even your magic is more powerful i mean i know some can be impale quite powerful. for staff users yeah yeah basically but then i would lo like if if we're thinking like oh come on now you can't have the best of all worlds you can't have a bow and a sword and a shield i'd say to you i'd be prepared to sacrifice regenerate for that ability and then of okay. course yeah. i am potentially hampering myself to give myself what i want in combat and then yeah. you are presented with choice choice yeah. against the meta oh, well hang on a second well the meta is to have regenerate but I want to just go out there and have fun, but I want my bow, and then I want a two hand, or I want yep. a sword and shield yep. when it comes exactly. to it. I mean, thing is, don't get me wrong, I do use the sword. I'll occasionally throw the dagger, and I do use the sword, but all the but it's just too reliable. It's just yeah. too and <laughs> uh, and I'm too too old hat with it. Anyway, we um, <laughs> um I think. I think I heard one of the zombies that's in this wave that's going to be coming up say, "Get on with it!" So we probably, <laughs> well, actually, probably uh, one, one second on. before that, yeah, go on. um, I did want to just say that I totally forgot what I was going to say. I, I do, <laughs> however, there Edit there was something out. else that Edit I was going to get like to. I had. <laughs> there, there's two other things. I want us to open that chest first, and I want to, oh, okay. uh, yeah, as as we do this. Have you been using the hand scanner to start these final battles, or do you just click A? What do you? You can't use the hand scanner. I've tried. That was fixed. It was fixed. Was recently. it? Yes. Yeah. Ah. And I, I didn't know that either. I, I guess maybe I went I over the patch notes and I just recently. forgot. I thought I did too, but in a video with Quaker X, he showed me like, oh, hey, there's, there's this thing you can do. Also. Where the heck are the mimic? Man, we didn't get a single mimic. <laughs> no, oh, but this man. is exactly how it should be. Because as I said, Gary, like, you know, I want to maybe come across... The mimics are cool and everything, but as yeah. you said, the reward is a little bit, you know, un uneventful, so to speak. I want to come... I would like to see the mimics rarity sort of like... If I played 10 dungeons in a week, I'd like to maybe see the mimic once, maybe oh, wow. twice... I want them to be so rare that you just, like, you're like, oh, we haven't seen any mimics. We haven't seen any mimics. And if we play enough dungeons and we don't get mimics, you'll stop and you'll, you, you'll just, like, be in <laughs> get chest mode. And that's yeah. when they hit you. That's right. how it should be. You don't want mimics being a yeah. constant thing. And then the only the problem is there is that you... <sighs> The, the players that don't play quite as much if it's like mm. a beginner player somebody could hop into dungeons of eternity and only play for like an hour trial type thing or like yep. their two hours until they can return the game or yep. whatever and that never is. see them and good exactly 
Like, and, and that's one of the things that like sells the game. That's why I feel like it should be. Aww. I mean, there, there's other things that sell the game, but oh, the next do not sell this game. No, you don't think so? No, I th- you this think game... it pushes more people away? Is that what you're saying? No, no. I like mimics are good, but they're, they're just additions. We can both agree they're they're not very impactful on the game in their rewards. Okay. And let's sure. face it, when you've taken on your first mimic, they especially in the level two chest the level three chest well maybe i'll change my mind but <laughs> on the level two chest yeah. they're not exactly a threat are they because you pop the key in and open up and well you can just run away yeah you know yeah. and no, then it's and really then just mimic scary. doesn't matter does it no it is but then the thing is i would have said yes it is an event but is it an event that would get somebody to go, oh, fuck me, Mimics are in this game. I'm buying this game. I would imagine for the vast majority of casual players, them knowing that Mimics are in the game would probably be like, oh, fuck this. I didn't want well, a jump scare. I wanted a cooperative dungeon crawler, for Christ's being, sake. Yeah, but being devil's advocate here, I would, uh, me personally, That's a good this position how... to play. I am the devil. <laughs> yeah, oh, true, true. Be, being the angel's advocate, advocate out here, whatever. Um, but yeah, no, I I think that me personally, when when I first saw my mimic, but or my mm. first mimic, I was thinking, man, the attention to detail of this mimic and the fact that they just put this in the game with nobody knowing, and they yep. had updates. They the update was about long score swords, and it was about a lot of other things. It wasn't yep. about mimics, and yet they yep. added mimics, and it was a super cool feature. That was maybe it my is. favorite part about it. And I feel like other people might have that same perspective of, wow, that is just so cool that they put that in this game. I would not right. have expected it. Or maybe I did expect it. And because I see it, it's like, okay, yeah, this, this game really lives up to the hype because it's there. So for me, personally, before yeah. we had Mimics, this game on the trial, for me, like... The, the only thing that I would say is I think their trial is like 30 minutes at the moment. I don't know if it's even still on anymore. I don't, I think don't so. know. Yeah. I don't know. I think they should have a permanent trial on this game. And the reason being is this is one of those few games. And I think that permanent trial should be solo play only. And I okay. think that permanent that this permanent trial should be an hour minimum. Because yeah. then you are potentially likely to see it well the thing is you can buy the game and then refund within two hours now i'm not going to say that you're going to see the entire game within three hours because that just ain't going to fucking happen but for me like the game is strong enough that having a long trial speaks for itself there's a reason why a lot of developers don't do anything more than a 15 minute trial because they don't have once much you've else. scratched that surface mm-hmm. there's fucking it's like oh right where's where's the rest of the game yeah. 15 minutes isn't enough but half an hour maybe would be right half but i've hour, put then, hundreds of hours into this game and i don't know how much you've put and other people same, might have same but, hundreds yeah but that's why i think like the game was impactful enough on me when I first looked at it, and I didn't do a trial. I, I, would, yeah. I was as soon as I turned this game on and started exploring the dungeons, I had set my mind within the opening, within the tri- within the the tutorial, if I'm honest. Yeah. And then when you hit the dungeons, so I don't think the mimic would turn anyone from a on the fence to a buyer. I think the game does that already. Okay. What the mimic does though for the likes of me and you and Mm. then the casual player who starts playing a lot is oh shit you know and and again it is back yeah it is impactful (laughs) it's that that fresh new thing that it almost takes you back to oh my god this game is so good sort of thing yeah nostalgia type like it inflicts those nostalgia feels to you I, I, i get the impression that you you may at some point in the future uh consider maybe a romantic uh you know relationship with mimics it does sound like you are a big fan however i don't think they're that impactful enough to turn someone who might buy the game into someone who definitely was but uh yeah. okay. i mean i don't know you stick your dick in what you like i, that's, <laughs> I, I guess at this point we should just <laughs> we should just say hey hey for anyone who mimics has listened great, <laughs> some people like 
more than others. <laughs> yeah. To a- to anybody who has ended up listening to this much of this conversation and gotten to this point, uh, put down in the comments. Do you think that the mimic would sell you on the game? <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't put that. Don't put that. Would you stick your dick in a mimic like JJ would? That's right. The right. Co- <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Put that in the comments. Yes or no to that question there. Yeah. Um, oh dear. Cool. Yeah. So actually, do do the thing. Do the hand scanner. Uh, so it works now. It, it should. Yeah, it does. It doesn't yeah. do it properly, but it does at least yeah. work. Exactly. It, it does, doesn't display like, hands hand like that. Yeah. yeah. But it it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this is why I like the twenty percent volume instead of thirty percent because oh, what, of those the rules. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I get you. Oh, it might have an easy clap. Easy win here, maybe. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, what if this, a, this well, difficulty if five? Third. We are overpowered level. A little bit. Maybe. <laughs> maybe a little. No, I can't even get up there. I, I can't get his head. I'm going I'm to do the little run around. Take my time. In fact, oh, no, he's just going to jump down. Okay, cool. He's jumping. Yeah, I haven't. I don't know if I've ever had boss fights in this room before. That, that's one of the things where, like, I've been playing this game for hundreds of hours, and this specific situation just hasn't happened to me. Which, not I, that it was super... It wasn't extremely impactful because you kind of just destroyed them because they were... Like, I even think, yeah, I, I would say it was cool. on that basis. No, it was cool because it's something I probably haven't experienced either, but I'll be honest with you, my memory isn't that great, as we've discussed. So, <laughs> but the thing is... I really like this room, and this is another one of those ones that's particularly good for, you know, fighting lots and lots of things in, just because there's a lot of running around to do and hit multiple tiers and 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 so on. So, yeah. and then you know that risk of you know fighting. Ah, ah, oh no, I'm going to the fucking catch it by the dungeon. <laughs> Yeah, Come on, Devs, yeah. put it in. Just for me. <laughs> it might take hundreds of hours, and I might be the only person that appreciates it, but still. You will not. In. You will not be the. <laughs> yes, it might take hundreds of hours. <laughs> no, it doesn't no. take hundreds of hours. <laughs> but see, actually, let let us help pay and like let us, let us help them as much as possible. I, I want to see some DLCs, pink mm. cosmetics, or some stuff mm. that we can start paying for capes. To, to support capes, them more. Capes, capes, capes. I want a fucking oh, cape. Sweet. Oh, I would love capes. Scarfs, capes. Yeah, cape. that would be... Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd love yeah, a cape. It is it is one of the things that I will put out there as well because um, I do mention it a lot, the In-Death Unchained game. I don't yeah. even know if you've played that or not. I still it have is a enough. fantastic game. And it does look like Super it. Bright did a great job in it and supported it for a long time. But they're one of the strangest developers that I've come across because they had an audience. Now, that audience was uh, medium to small, I would say. But they had a lot of players and a lot of recurring players. There were a lot of players in tournaments. Mm -hmm. I'd go as far as to say feverant. It was like a cult at times. Like people with thousands of hours. It's what you want. It's what you want. I was one of them. I was, well, yeah, probably one of the ones leading the charge. And (laughs) the problem that I always had with that game is... People wanted to throw money at that game for more. I yep. am exactly the same with other gate in Dungeons of Eternity. They yep. need to be clever in how they do it because you never want to split your audience based on no. DLC. No. It's part of the reason why I like the system that Walkabout has. In the, Me too. You purchase a course and... You can... Okay, you can't do all the cool stuff within it, but, you know, if the host is hosting, then you can experience it. And then that's almost like, well, then they've got to make good content because people can just, one person can buy it, or at least good incentives. One person can buy it and everybody can then technically play it. And that will keep the devs honest in how much they charge and what else they give. And I don't know, I think that's just fair. Is that I think everyone could experience the content, but maybe not yeah. to the full extent of someone who wants to support the developers. Because let's face it, it's a right. business. They can't keep giving free shit away all the time. Otherwise, and I can tell you now because I've been there, you'll end up in the situation that Superbright are now in. You have this fervent audience that you are now losing, 
and you never capitalized on DLC, paid content, and everyone was screaming for more. And the responses yep. that we always got were, no, we don't want to charge you for additional content. We're going to add things. And it's like, yeah, but if you have the funds flowing, then you'd give them more, and they're asking for more. And, yep. like, anybody who doesn't think that a business needs to make money is a fucking idiot. It yeah. is a business. They do need to make money. And other there knows this, wrong too. ways to do it. There yeah. are right ways to do it. The wrong way to do it is separate your audience or just not listen to them. Yeah. I know these guys, I know other gate are fantastic at listening to yep. what people want, even if it is fucking pie in the sky hundreds of hours for something that only two people or like kind of <laughs> suggestions. But yeah. yeah, they really need to do something like it's it's part of the reason why I haven't really engaged with this game as much as I should have, because mm -hmm. like you, I've put hundreds of hundreds of hours into it, and yeah. it, it, it's great and everything. But you do get to that point where it's like, well, I've maxed out all the bars. There's no the incentive to come won. back. There is no challenge. There is no incentive. Yeah. There's nothing more yep. to do. I, and End I don't. I'm, and I'm not talking about oh, just raise raise the level cap by another no. ten. I need. Yeah. That there needs to be more more reason to return more reason to get into it more and as you said tournaments challenges those are all the things that kept people coming back to idu yep. the thing yep. is idu now is i haven't played that game for about six months and it's starting to turn into a bit of a i mean there's still a feverant player base if they came out with new content tomorrow everyone would go flooding back but right. they're not going to. And do you know what the line is? Oh, well, yeah, we're probably not going to be doing too much more on it other than keeping the seasons ticking over because mm. we're working on other things. It's like, uh. fantastic. In Death Unchained 2? No. Okay, fantastic. What is it you're doing? We'll buy it. We're not telling you. And <laughs> we have heard nothing. There has been no screenshots or videos or anything along those lines. And it's just... Oh, as somebody who yeah. is a businessman themselves and has done business, it's like the crowd's there and they, they're, they're fried. They're like, on. take yeah, my they want money. It. You exactly. Know? And, uh, take this. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, yeah. And, and I think I think that the uh, walkabout mini golf example was so good. Mm. They, they do mm. that that uh paid content so well uh DLC stuff and it's well um, priced and the incentive well, exactly. is there. Yeah, and yeah, then that's it, the other benefit as well for somebody like me. And there's, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that older or a find gamer. It, it, like I've got a library of games that is creaking under the weight of it because I wait to pick up games. I, there's few games. This is one that I would have picked up on launch, regardless of discount, because it's just yeah. too good and there was just too much here and exactly what I wanted. Right. Again, coming fresh off of the IDU and that just getting stale, and there was yep. too much of what i wanted and that was the other big thing on that game as well no cooperative no multiplayer no way to interact with other players it was a very mm -hmm. lonely game and experience but there were at least leaderboards and competitions so the community interacted outside of the game as opposed to inside the game which this game fucking nails right but yeah the the, the walkabout mini golf thing well priced and I, I think they could do something great with this it could be fantastic. i agree fantastic I agree. Could, and could. I, I think, like, also um, with Racket NX, and I don't know what they did in Underdogs, but Racket NX at least. I, have you played Racket NX? I have Racket NX. I'm probably going to have to give you a game now, aren't I? I've barely, I haven't played it as much as I should. Yeah. So. yeah. But, um, I, I mean, I, I recently really got into it, and yeah. I, I just realized that, like, they do have those, those paid cosmetic things, and they yeah, do but... a really good job of having regular cosmetics that you unlock as you play yep. the game more and you get you unlock achievements and whatever else you unlock so you're at least cool getting cosmetics. something exactly so you don't have to go for these paid cosmetics yeah, you don't have I, to engage i can almost guarantee you i'm spending an additional 20 dollars because there are these really cool cosmetics that i can buy alongside of it it's, and yeah and it's I another think, example of keeping the devs kind of honest yeah. in that you're getting what you want for the price that you're willing to pay you know right. no one wants to feel like they're shelling out loads G going back to what i started saying earlier like you know i um 
absolutely terrible for not supporting devs on launch, even if the game is great and waiting for the discounts and waiting for the bits and pieces. Because for me, there are some games that are great and then there are some that are all right, but they're overpriced for what they are. And if yeah. I don't need that game right now, and I'll tell you, I don't need any games right now. My <laughs> library is fucking creaking. <laughs> and, sure. I, and I usually rev do. And I can be a patient person when I want to be. Mm. But with something like this, not the case. But then you wait for the discounts and we all know they come or you find the friends code or you wait for this you wait for that yep. and you wait for the other and sure. you can do the same with the lcs as well if you don't want to interact with that at that price but well, you don't need to buy it straight away you can yep. go and play it with the other people and then wait mm -hmm. for it to come down in price so then you capture your person who wants to stay up to date with everything you capture your person that's like i want to support the devs you capture the person that is like that's cool i want it and yeah. then you also capture me i'll pick it up when it goes cheap you know and you know you've got the, <laughs> all bases covered but all then spectrum, yeah. all people can still interact with it without having to pay for it but yeah. like yeah that would be the one for me add as a I new agree. biome for I'd pay a couple of quid, two or three quid for a new biome yeah. and then have it so that the host, if they've bought it, can activate that biome and everybody can experience oh it. Oh my gosh. But then yeah. only the people that have bought it can, I don't know, get the, open the chests and get the stuff out of it. Yeah. You no, know? I mean, I and that might sound a little yeah. bit counterintuitive, but then, no. of course, the likes of me and you that have poured hundreds and hundreds of hours, well, I don't need to be opening chests and I don't need to yeah. get anything out of it. But I would exactly. still feel like I'm missing out. <laughs> and so, yeah, of course, yeah. you, and, you create. I mean, that. it's it's like a proven thing, too. Walkabout mini golf. Mini golf. Oh my gosh, I can't even say mini golf, but <laughs> they've done it so well. You're getting too excited, JJ. I like I it. Got, I'm, I'm too excited <laughs> about Walkabout mini golf. But no, I, 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 do, I do love that you could do realms just like you do these golf courses mm. they're kind of similar concepts easily um, but yeah it's it's really and a similar at least paid content type idea mm. that they yeah. could do and i i do think you might have to put a little bit more effort into realms if they're going for the whole like you have to create a whole nother enemy a whole like different design and like totally different uh, rooms, but if it was just yes. another color scheme and like some yeah, other oh things, no, of course, it yeah, it, it has yeah. to have it has to have some effort in it. I don't want to play yeah. a couple of quid for a cosmetic on the dungeons. No, no. I want to pay a couple of quid for you know some new rooms and some new bits and pieces. But exactly. that that all comes down to price as yeah. well, because if that cosmetic to I don't know change the underworld from. Uh, I, well, yeah, you've got to be careful, haven't you? I don't want to pay, like, a pound to change the underworld from that blue aesthetic to a red aesthetic. Yeah, but exactly. If, you know, if you get something that is kind of similar to the underworld but is on more of a, a grand scale, I think it needs to be a big change. Like, one of the realms that I'd love to see is, like, a, I don't know if you've played... Well, again, you haven't played in death, but um, in death Unchained, they added a new level to the first cycle. Uh, okay. uh, or rather as the first level so you could go to purgatory which everyone's played to death and then they added desolation as a choice i think they should have put it in hmm. as a playable level but they added okay. it in now the thing with desolation is it is absolutely fucked above so that's one realm like an absolute decrepit kind of realm but the one that i think would really work with dungeons is like a royal tomb where it's all like fucking gold all the brickwork is fucking pristine and that it looks cool. like yeah. you're going into like a a proper like treasure chamber so royalty to speak. type place yeah yeah i, I agree really work so, so but here, yeah, it definitely needs to be changes cha you know it can't just be a little change of color and a little change of this it needs to be something but i'd pay yeah. i'd pay a couple of quid for that and then if there are other incentives on that as well there's a new enemy in there to experience even just one enemy and, yeah and if you own it, I don't know, you've got the ability to equip this perk and you've got the ability to equip capes. All things that don't make any difference, but when you see other players using it, you're like, mm. yeah, hey, piece yeah. Of that action. Just like Walkabout, the whole reason why I've bought entire courses is because I'm like, yeah, I like that club. <laughs> Which one's that one again? And then you've yeah, got to exactly. go in and then you've got to do the clues and that's another experience again as well. Yep. So, yep. Cool. Well, um... I think we should do a little change of scenery and then do our final mm. little discussion about um, 
uh sandbox sandbox yeah. Yeah, yeah. come on over come on over let's let's have this discussion. i can i can hear the fear in your voice you're dreading this conversation aren't oh, I'm, you? I'm excited and for rightly this conversation. so rightly so you should be dreading it well, <laughs> hang, on, well hang on maybe we should do some target practice yeah or is this beeping to i don't think if this if this is a bit much Ooh. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm, probably I'm maybe sucking. a little, little bit go. intense. What, like shooting and talking? Is that what you're? Well, you're no, I don't. Oh, no, because there's the Pippin. Yeah, let me get your score up a little bit for you. Bring you into contention. <laughs> there you go. Couple of bullseyes for you. Don't oh, say man, I don't I'm, give you anything, JJ. Um, I'm a little, uh, no, a little yeah, sorry. Here. You probably this probably isn't a great idea for talking. Um, <laughs> where did you want to change the scenery to? <laughs> uh, I like the scenery but, up here. Did you, Actually, here, did let's you want to do the chain. sitting down? Sitting or are you not that keen on that? No, no, I don't have like the kind of the setup. It's weird to be sitting down and standing up at the same time. You know what I mean? But uh, oh yeah, no, well, yes. That's... The thing is, I would have sat down, and then I would have, um, I would have like sat down in the chair and then sat down in real life and then Oculus it and and right, and right, done it that way. But that's complicated. Come on now. Um... Oh, come on now. <laughs> come on now. So go on. So let's yeah. let's lavish people with what we've been what okay. what we've been holding off from on discussion. Yeah, so you you've kind of heard my idea, right? Do you mm. want me do you think I should like explain it to the yeah, audience? No, no. Here explain and then you explain take it away? your flawed position. Okay. And yeah, my, my no. flawed <laughs> perspective and then you can get to your awful perspective here. Okay. Perfect, perfect. I so, don't uh, have awful anything. <laughs> I have an awful drunk in my streams but i don't have awful anything else so right right okay well yeah so this uh the sandbox mode coming out pretty soon um i talked to quaker x about it and uh i i don't know if it was necessarily something that the community had been begging for i don't know if uh quaker x specifically or or just like the dev team in general has thought that like this is what they need for the next generation of players or I'm not sure the exact mindset that we were going for here, but I have my take on it. And my take is that I've seen other sandbox modes. I, I haven't seen like a huge array, um, but just based off of things like Blade and Sorcery, Battle Talent, um, Underdogs, they all have, or Racket NX, like these games, they have their sandbox modes. And Blade and Sorcery, for example, is like, it was built as a sandbox it was just mm. that a sandbox and yet it is the most popular i think it's like almost always in the top 10 of the most selling charts of, mm -hmm. of quest and on steam and basically like every vr platform you get blade and sorcery i i don't have it personally because i always thought that the mechanics seemed kind of like slow paced and silly and like i it's just not my personal game but it's a sandbox and people do the the creative type people and the people who just want to goof around and do random things they make these interesting or like quirky weird videos that just absolutely take off mm -hmm. on social media and whatever else and just having a sandbox allows these players and these people to basically sell the game for the developers and sell the whole idea of like oh you can do this you can do that you can do everything um and i think that there's like a potion wizards of something where you're like doing potions and stuff i forgot what game that is maybe somebody in the comments will know what i'm Waltz talking of about the wizards waltz of the wizards uh maybe uh -huh. but it's so something like working with potions and i i think there's, yeah 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 that yeah, well, thing... Waltz of the Wizards has got that, and Waltz of okay, the Wizards okay. is one of those that, you know, various people are doing. I mean, I, I got a little bit of an earwig for Waltz of the Wizards of an idea anyway, and I had to put okay. it to video. But, uh, yeah, and I but so what, what I was saying, I think, like, for one, there's that sales perspective, but then there's also this <laughs> perspective of you're basically having, you're giving the community the ability to develop your game with you, or at least have like an experimental take on development so rather than people going into the discord and like giving out suggestions like hey oh i think it would be cool if we did this hey i think it would be cool if we do that you could actually go into this like level editor or this dungeon editor or uh enemy editor like whatever kind of editor sandbox type thing you are going into you can like click on these buttons and mess with the different properties that they have in this game we just haven't been 
it, it hasn't been accessible privy to, to players. Yeah, 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 privy to. And so once we have that access, maybe not all of it, maybe just like the, the interesting, funky things that could uh, bring potential, then they don't have to worry about like using being super creative with everything they can kind of just let the community do their thing and maybe it's not like i, I don't want to divide the player base and i don't think that it is a good idea to a, like no just a sandbox, sandbox won't do that just, I, yeah i don't uh, think we so. can agree at least that a sandbox will not do that it won't okay, divide yeah, yeah. because it's something you can engage with if you want to right or not yeah yeah exactly um but yeah, I, I do think just there's that sales perspective and then there's also that community help with development type things. Mm. And like both of them are ways to drive the game's involvement, interaction, and uh, just player base in total sales. And so... Yeah. It, I don't, I don't get me wrong. It's all good things. Everything that you're saying is yeah. good for any game. Okay. So, and just to maybe preface what burn pan's talking about if you don't know is that there is a sandbox mode coming to dungeons of attorney that's probably the first thing that we should say is that a sandbox mode so we don't know how it's going to be Fair done enough, yeah. and the only thing that i will say is if there's any developer that i trust to get it on the money it is other game it they is, will yeah. do a good job of it because i think so you know we won't talk about the two-handed sword and they know about that but <laughs> other than the two-handed sword i still love the two-handed been... sword Hey, yeah. I love the two-handed sword as well. But it's a hit or miss for a lot of people and, and things. Yeah, yeah it's, and, and, it can be a little this, weird. Yeah. This happening? No thanks. I, I, yeah. That doesn't make me feel like an ultimate badass. That makes yeah. me feel like a klutz <laughs> in the dungeon, if I'm honest. But again, these are little things. And, you know, yeah. obviously with the way that the game's code and the way that things are done, this fuck, it's fucking difficult. Some games yep. get two-handed swords spot on. Most don't. But the, then the uh, thing yeah, is, know. they have got melee spot on, and I do think, or I think they've got melee spot on, uh, even though I don't engage with it much. I fucking love it when I do. I like it better than I, I just any prefer other game, that. Yeah. So, yep. so, I suppose my counter for this, and it would be different dependent on the game, and it's not right. a hard counter because I understand where you're coming from. Good for sales, brings a new fresh crowd in, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I'm all for Sam box mode but i almost look at sandbox mode as kind of the last thing that you bring to a game and i've always <laughs> found games that lead with sandbox a la like blade and sorcery blade and sorcery mm -hmm. is it's a little bit you know it's a little bit of a lowbrow idea it's almost like oh we've got these cool mechanics uh go yeah give them a, a sandbox them. yeah exactly yeah <laughs> go now do your you own go thing. do it so yeah. there is the other thing as well. Like I'm like in my 40s and you're in your 20s. So there yeah. is the age thing as well. And of course you'll like Sandbox because, well, you haven't put as many hours into games as I have. I'm, mm -hmm. I am talking for the older gen gamer. Actually, and wait, let, the let me, let me the, pause the you here for a second. Yeah, go on. I personally don't like Sandbox. I mean, I should have mentioned that originally. I personally... Well, they presented almost, a pretty fucking strong case I, for I them, do. JJ. Yeah. The thing is, I... I think that sandbox is really good for the game itself mm. i personally don't think i would take too much advantage out of it however if i really get into a game i do dabble in their sandbox and i yeah. think i would probably dabble a decent amount in dungeons of eternity sandbox and i, I think like that's that's something that i really want to see but again like i personally just i i guess it is weird weird that i'm arguing defending for it, something that you're not even that big a fan exactly. of no well no but that's yeah. no but that that then you know that's constructive isn't it because you are you know touting the merits of something that you don't think is necessarily that great but could work here and that is the point that i suppose i do agree with with you it could make it, but i just think we don't need sandbox yet we've got dungeons of eternity it's a dungeon crawling game it's a cooperative game i just want more of what we have already these guys are not out of ideas they've got lots more things that they want to implement for sandbox sure. for me is almost like as you said uh guys we're kind of out of ideas now so uh, what should we do oh sandbox we yeah. haven't done sandbox yet right and that's how i feel about it yeah. i would much prefer they work on something and so this is this is for for those of you who obviously uh, aren't mind readers for when me and Ben pan have been talking off this 
is and and i've said like nope nope we hold this and we talk about this while you're doing your video <laughs> and yeah. so i'm a big proponent of roguelikes and again i know that this is actually for some reason and i i can see again the pros and the cons of it as to why the roguelikes and modes are seen as like you know things like lazy and oh not another roguelike and and, yep. and those sort of things and my argument would be that if they're done right and they can only be done right with the right kind of game the game has to have solid mechanics it has to have solid content in it already mm. onward again to bring onward to the fore is a fucking classic example i like onward i've put a lot of onward time in i started yeah. looking at the competitive scene i've played it a lot in all of its various guises the thing that had me coming back for months and months and months and wanting me to stream the game and wanting me to do the thing was the roguelike mode that they added to that and the reason why it worked is because it switched the game up it changed it to something new where you were using unfamiliar weaponry and building your kit as a team which you don't do because you usually select your loadout like we get to do and yeah. You're going into unfamiliar situations. There's that voting system, so it feels like there's some sort of cooperative and various bits and pieces going on. Mm -hmm. And I just think that something like that would trump a sandbox. Sandboxes mm -hmm. are all well and good. I don't... And so I suppose I think the reason why a lot of people are against roguelikes is they see it as lazy as somebody who is has played a lot of games if i have a game that i love i want to play it forever i want to play yeah. it for lot um in death unchained is an example of it's not even really a true roguelike in the sense of so you would probably call it again roguelike roguelite rogue something yeah. or but other underdogs but, right is a true see uh, uh, so but hang on word? i'll let you go okay. underdogs is a great example yeah. i fucking love underdogs underdogs is a fantastic game a lot of cool mechanics a lot of cool ideas i very much like the aesthetics it reminds mm -hmm. me of warhammer 40k and necromunda for any watchers that you know the 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 underhive and the the pit fighting and various bits and pieces but obviously they yep. really use mechs and necromunda and you probably won't know what i'm talking about as far as Necromunda. but that doesn't matter because there'll be <laughs> one person that'll go i do fucking know oh, what i'm sure. talking about yeah exactly so, <laughs> and as long as there's one it's worth saying yep. so for me and obviously apologies for interrupting i'll let you carry on but the you underdogs can. was what i was coming to yep. is that underdogs has again it's in its fledgling state it's just started it's only really just come out mm -hmm. and instead of concentrating on more 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 they're going sandbox you do it and it's like i need <laughs> for that game I could, I've played that game to death. I've, again, I've probably put two, 300 hours into that game. I yeah. need more weapons. I need more modules. I need more story elements. I need a different story or a different starting mech or ways to yeah. change the starting mech. I need branching story paths. And they've got the basis for it all. And I'm sure it would take a lot more work than a sandbox, but I think it would make a game that is already fantastic just building on its strengths right and for me sandbox is like oh we're not lazy way out that. yeah basically yeah. like so you know underdogs hasn't even got the fucking buzzsaw that the main character on their oh, that's box coming. art but yeah had, right <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. after the sandbox, right? right? right. But and so it, it hasn't take... got all of that cool stuff. So yeah, cool. right, right. Yeah, no, I, I totally, I get where you're coming from there. I think that the sooner you come out with a sandbox, the less stuff you have to worry about later. And like, you can basically offload some of like what I was saying. You can kind of offload some of that quote unquote developer work or like mm. um, just exploration of different mm. mechanics you can offload that to the community which so there are going to be very uh, dedicated people out there that really love it and i mean especially if you make a good game they are going to be pushing forward this kind of stuff and making cool yeah. challenges the cool thing i think that underdogs does with the sandbox is the challenges and so the, the sandbox or mode you like click on that in underdogs and you've got these developer made challenges that you can mm -hmm. try and I personally am a huge fan of those types of challenges where I, I completed the roguelite mode. I've completed it multiple times and 
I want more. Like, like the roguelite is cool and all, but it's it's kind of the like fucking brilliant. Weird. It, what was that? The, uh, sorry, the the roguelike's fucking brilliant. It's so good. It is. But when it you've is. done everything unlocked everything and you've gone through a lot of permutations i just yeah. want more that was as i said what was saying but... yeah yeah but it's yeah it's it is pretty awesome um but i i don't feel like it's much or, or at least too much different than something like dungeons of attorney it it gives you i guess it makes it more random dungeons of attorney you kind of just like go and choose your loadout but for that roguelite mode your loadout is being created as you go through this uh like story mode-esque type thing and mm -hmm. i think there is definitely merit to that and like obviously dungeons of eternity we've put hundreds of hours into this we've probably put a good chunk of hours into uh underdogs as well just with the roguelite mode and i've kind of got to that point with uh underdogs and even dungeons of eternity where i i just I don't feel like there's much more content and stuff that I can do that's like really fresh and new and like a mm. challenge to me and and uh, kind of expands my horizons almost. It's yeah. like Dungeons of Eternity, it's got multiplayer so I can always just talk to people and like find new things through the multiplayer. Uh, Underdogs on the other hand doesn't have that. It's just that one mode and so if they came out with new content, I would try the new content for maybe a few hours and then just be like, okay, I tried the new content, great, good stuff then like but that maybe, depends maybe on maybe how much they put in it does that depends it really on how does. much they put. okay so let me ask you this then sure. if they doubled the content I you're not still just gonna go back to that game boxer. and play it no but if you no no no, yeah. no that was not okay. no you're not getting okay. out that easy sure, if they sure. doubled the content and so there was a fresh spew of weapons added to what you've got you uh -huh. had another story so that there was another mech to start out with and i don't need all the cutscenes or all the extra bits and pieces they can just put yeah. minimum effort in on that but what okay. i do when is maybe a different kind of starting mech or a way to choose the starting mech and that we are say a an unknown a character name that we can make and then all of a sudden they've doubled the amount of weaponry so all of a sudden you can get the buzz saw and the chain sword and for, mm -hmm. again for the warhammer 40k necromunda nerds and the you know and the and and insert weapon here and insert weapon here and insert weapon here and then modules that actually make an impactful difference and then different arenas and different progression and different swords because as we can agree we've both put well you probably put a uh, maybe a little less time into underdogs than i have i feel maybe. like i've played underdogs to absolute death and okay. i probably put a good it's got to be 100 hours maybe 200 hours into it and it's got that level of content to keep you playing have you done if the... you can engage with it yeah, yeah. haven't have touched, them, the... yet. Have them, touched okay. them yet haven't touched them yet so this was what i was going to get onto is yeah for somebody like me who is uh, Again, as we're talking about, I, I have to take the position of gentleman. We, I won't say older, gentleman gamer. Is that <laughs> when I hear sandbox, I think, oh, for fuck's sake. So not only have I got to put the headset on, power it all up, select the game and go in there. I've now got to make my own fun or I've got to play somebody else's version of fun. For me, having put a lot of time into games, I just want to go and play the game. And no. it's not, I mean, I'm not going from the IQ of oh, just slavering idiot that just will play anything that's thrown in front of. It needs to be good and it needs to be engaging and it needs to be more, more, more. But what I don't want is sandbox because then all of a sudden I'm having a effort into but that's creating the thing. my own fun. Right. That's the that's the thing though. You don't have to because these people have. Uh, um, well, for one, the developers have their set challenges that they created. So it's you don't have to choose based on other people's community made stuff you just play their challenges and you go through those first couple of challenges and just like see oh can i complete this one can i do this one and like there's i think eight or so challenges that you can do yeah. and it's just it's fun to like do it and try to complete it maybe struggle a few times and then maybe complete okay. it and try to complete it later yeah so here's here's the question then uh -huh. if i offered you double of everything that you've experienced in underdogs so far so 
new story mode, mm -hmm. new weaponry, double the amount of weaponry, double the amount of modules, things yeah. that are actually impactful as well, not just like increase said stat by 10%, add a new slot, yeah. things like that. Things right. that are like, you know, um, your right arm is no longer used for maneuverability, but you now have a shield uh, right. or, you know, or, or you, you've changed your locomotion so that you can move a lot slower, but you can do it with the, the, the stick or, you know, you mm. add another stick or something so we're not talking about like stat increases items yeah. here we're talking about impactful stuff you know the buzzsaw can fucking cut things in half yeah, and yeah. The, the the crusher can absolutely you know you his um the fucking clamp from aliens on the loader a couple of those fucking bad boys the forks that you put onto it and then you yeah. just put that squeeze on the enemy and they slowly compact and then snap in half I okay. know we've got the grabbers, but they, you know, you, yeah, they they just you grab and throw. Really do, yeah. yeah, I mean, you can yeah. pull them apart. You can, you can smash them, and okay, yeah, you can you can actually pull them apart, but it all wigs out and and yeah, it doesn't work properly. Yeah, gotcha. Maybe, but, so okay. if I offered you all of that extra content and all those double uh, bit of species, would you yeah. still take a bit of a sandbox and challenges? Hard take, but yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. So. I mean, oh, I, I end do. End interview. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would still. End I mean, Zenvid. I would love to see both, <laughs> but I think it is more valuable mm. that Sandbox comes before oh, no. the roguelike. And there, there you have it. I would like to see both. Yeah. But then but that's you... my point: is more content, more content, more content first, because then all of a sudden there's more that you can do with the Sandbox. I get the It takes impression longer that... to get the content if you right? don't have the sandbox out there for people to uh, mess with already. I'd say that's weak source from the developer then in that case. You shouldn't Maybe. have to be relying on your community. Name uh. me great games that have relied on the success of their community to make the game success more successful than it was on launch. Well, I, I wouldn't say relied on the community, but like well, Racket NX, for example, they do these monthly challenge where, monthly challenges where they do fully rely on their community to create mm -hmm. levels for them. And then mm -hmm. they submit their levels and the developers choose which levels based on a set of criteria. And so okay. that's like a thing where it's a community developer partnership type thing that I think is really freaking cool. I love mm -hmm. month, monthly challenges. And it's just like the perfect. I, I would love to see monthly dungeons in here. Um, yeah, but yeah, that that's just one example. I don't know if that kind of answers. For, for, yeah, I suppose for me, like Racket NX, I have played a lot, not as much as you by the sounds of things. I've actually had it for a very long time. I've played a couple of cooperative match, a uh, couple of versus matches, and because you can play yeah. cooperative in that as well. Yeah, and it's pretty awesome. I've interacted with that, but then like for me, it would have been about adding more, so different styles of arenas, maybe something like fucking Tron, so that mm -hmm. it's the same sort of style where you're battering it around, but instead of us both standing standing next to each other you're over that end of the pitch i'm over this end of the pitch and you know that classic thing from tron where you're chucking the disc and you're trying to hit your opponent's disc so that they eventually fall in having yeah. that but with racket nx and smashing those balls so they bounce off of something and then hit your opponent's floor and then he's got less maneuverability and yeah. i know it means changing the game up and adding new mechanics and bits and pieces but i suppose that brings me segues me nicely into my point is that adding more to a game putting enough but i suppose the the point that i'm trying to make is i don't think underdogs has enough going for it to make a sandbox as interesting it as it could okay. Nah, okay. as yeah, it could be yeah. if they added a lot more to it first okay and the thing is putting the sandbox in a good developer already has ideas a good developer yeah. already knows the direction they want to take the game in mm -hmm. a good developer does all of these things now i'm not like bringing us back to what we should be talking about which is dungeons of eternity they <laughs> yeah. do already have the content to support a sandbox mode yes i yeah. am and and again if I trust anybody with doing a sandbox mode in a game, it would be other gate, as I've already stated. Okay, so I yeah. am intrigued to see what they do. And yeah. the thing is, I love this game enough that I want to engage with that. And I would think that, and, and this is, I suppose, the, the big point that I'm trying to come to is, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people that are similar in perspective and gentlemanly or lady-like 
the or elderly gamer, whatever you want to call us. <laughs> okay. I think I think the term sandbox is not for them. Yeah. And I mean, it's part of the thing I said, like, yeah, just call it something like the Gauntlet or Trials or something. Don't call it Sandbox because I think you'll put people off with okay. the name Sandbox. Because I, I agree. I and, and and I suppose part and parcel of the problem is what we were talking about with other games. I associate Sandbox the same way as I kind of associate tower defense games as like kind of low effort and you haven't really <laughs> got much of an idea and i imagine they're quite okay. easy to program and so on and yeah. i know there'll be plenty of people going like ah yeah but roguelikes are the same thing it's like well at least roguelikes things are being generated for you and generated in front of you i suppose yeah. the easiest way i can level it down is i want a game to surprise and challenge me now, I know okay. that you can get that in a sandbox, but ultimately it's a creation and it's a level and eventually you'll get to know it Either and there won't really be any surprises in there for you. Unless, of course, you've got things like, you know, mimics, hidden right. content, things that you don't see very often yeah. as an example. And I suppose, I don't know, I would have much rather seen them go in another direction than sandbox i'd much rather see them do more modes more dungeons more content okay. more bits and pieces reason why i can kind of forgive it is there's already a lot here anyway yeah so and, and yeah do you do you think that uh this game in its current state is better for the uh, having a sandbox than underdogs that's kind of what it sounds like that uh, this yeah sandbox i don't i don't be think underdogs I, I suppose part and parcel of the problem that i've got with underdogs and it's a small thing and, yeah. and I've already mentioned it as well. The main fucking protagonist, or antagonist, protagonist, the main fucking mech in the game, yeah. on the title box, has a fucking buzzsaw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Having a mech with a buzzsaw means that you can fucking slice your way through things. Right. And that isn't even in the game yet. So I'm not saying that Underdogs isn't finished. It's got a lot of content in there. It's yeah. just the content that's in there is great, and they need to concentrate on adding more before yeah. they start going, right, community, have a go. Okay. And although I don't think this needs... Well, as you know, that is a lie. I personally think that this kind of game needs loads more of the same things that it's already doing and the same, yeah, same. things that it has.